Everyone keeps talking about their holy grail. So it got me thinking about what is my holy grail? Maybe it's time to start looking and maybe buy my holy grail. And no, it's not NARC or The Grid or Smash TV or any of those. It's something a little plain, maybe a little retro one would say. And it all started with these two gentlemen right after Retro Ralph did episode two chasing nostalgia, Pac-Man fever. So while Ralph was searching for his NARC and Smash TV, I was thinking about something different. And the number one person I have to thank for this find, well, it's this gentleman. Hi there, I'm David Sullivan. I am an arcade collector slash hoarder. <laughs> David's collection was on display on Chasing Nostalgia. And when I heard these words, it was music to my ears. Everything's for sale. Everything okay. in here that is mine is for sale. Okay. So which one of these beauties did I want? Well, it's nothing you can see in this picture. And it really doesn't look like any of these. It's actually this gem right here. And I know right now you're saying... What a piece of junk, Rexer. What the is that? It's a rusted piece of junk. And what is that? Is that Arkanoid? Who cares about Arkanoid? Well, you're right. Who cares about Arkanoid? But sometimes you have to look a little deeper when you're searching for a classic arcade. And if you take a little closer look at things sometimes, well, you'll find something like this, a Nintendo cereal plate, TKG3, which means it was once a Donkey Kong. So let's begin our restore process. First step, we're gonna have to paint it. You saw it was rusted, looked real bad, so we're gonna empty out everything from the inside, give it a rust, rough sand, and start to spray paint it. Now you can see a little bit of dent on this one side, but it's not real noticeable once we put the control panel back on. After painting the feet and the legs, we're gonna put those back on and it'll look like this. Now that it's painted, we're gonna have to put everything back in. First the power supply, which has the power switch on the bottom, going through the bottom of the cab. Then we're gonna do the service switch. I created a new harness for the service switch. Then we're gonna plug in this power converter box, we'll call it. I'm not really sure of the technical term for it, but this will be where the power comes from for the PCB for Donkey Kong. Next step would be to add a new coin mech. The one that came with it was beyond repair and I always like to have a coin mech that works in my arcades. Now you'll recall the Arkanoid joysticks on player one and player two sides of the control panels. I would remove these and clean up the control panels turning them into Donkey Kong control panels. I'd reuse the buttons, clean them up a little bit, change all the micro switches, redo all the wiring harnesses and then replace both joysticks with reproduction Donkey Kong joysticks. It's actually a very interesting type of button that they use on these cocktails and you'll notice they're green and blue which is an interesting color for Donkey Kong. Now installing the joysticks would be a little bit of a challenge because I wanted to make sure I got the dust washer correctly seated in there but I felt like I was missing a bracket that would hold the joystick in there. In the end, I made it work, and we have a nice working Nintendo reproduction joystick. The CRT was in good working condition, except for a horizontal sync issue. I'd get it a cap kit and get that fixed from Sharp Image Repair, and then it would look wonderful. A little burn in, but that's okay. As for the audio art, I used a line out converter with an amp instead of using the audio from the chassis. A little easier to control um, as well a little bit more modernizing it. Next step would be to clean up the top of the cocktail cabinet removing all the Arkanoid labels using some goo gone and a plastic knife here. You could use a metal one uh, but you would have to be careful not to scratch the laminate on top. All said and done it clean up nicely and at the end we will put on the Donkey Kong labels. The sides of the tabletop were in bad shape. I bondo them 
clean them up and sand them down and then I'd paint over it. Now these sides were actually a wood finish laminate type material so I wasn't happy I had to paint over them instead of having the proper laminate for the sides. After that I'd use some weather stripping on the edges of the tabletop. I had previously scraped off the old stripping. It was really dingy and dirty and it needed to be replaced. Now this will provide a soft cushion for the glass top as well as keep some debris out from the sides and keep the top a little cleaner. One thing I found extremely interesting was underneath the tabletop were wiring diagrams, video monitor diagrams, cautions. They had dip switch settings underneath. It was almost like having the manual underneath, maybe not to a full level of a complete manual, but it was very helpful when setting up this Donkey Kong. And to find it in this good of condition was actually a huge surprise. And before we put the top on, I'd give it a quick degaussing. Adding the top to the unit would be extremely easy. There's just two hinges that slide right on. Now I did have to repair the wood bracket that held these hinges uh, and just strengthen it in order to make sure the top wouldn't fall off and it would be secure on the unit. After getting the top on, I would replace the feet that go on the legs of the cocktail cabinet. These are specific to Nintendo cocktail cabinets and I purchased them from Mike's Arcade. I'd then add the plastic bezel that goes around the monitor. And then put in place the tinted plexiglass. This actually is great. It hides a lot of the burn in and actually makes the monitor look excellent. I'd wipe it down, clean it up before we add the labels. Turn it on just to make sure it looks good. And you can see the monitors displaying very nicely at this point. Now the next step is obviously my favorite part, adding the proper labels to go on the tabletop. This is actually a pretty plain tabletop. Uh, there's not too much going on here or too many graphics. Uh, there is some of these units that I saw with two of the instruction labels on each side, but I believe it really only came with one on one side and I think it looks better. Uh, it's not as busy if you just put one of the instruction cards on it. So we start with the uh, coin in label and there's actually one that's yellow that I think uh, might have come with the cocktail cabs, a yellow coin sticker. Uh, but I went with this uh, black and white one. And then I had to two-way tape the instruction card, the one uh, larger one on the upper left. That one did not have adhesive to the back. I would put the controls instruction in place right in front of player one and player two. And then I would put the glass top on. Although I did have the original glass top, it was too damaged and scratched for me to use it. So I had to have another one made by a glass company. After that, I put the brackets on that would hold the glass in place. And then a couple other details that I wanted to make sure I got right. I replaced the locks on each side that holds the tabletop down. And then I also made sure to get the bracket that holds the tabletop up working. Now, after all that, this is how it would look. So what's it like playing on this tabletop Donkey Kong? Well, I'll tell you, man, it kind of sucks. This control panel is very awkward. It takes a little bit getting used to, uh, but hey, maybe if we change the ambiance, maybe something will change. Oh yeah, now that's the nostalgia I was looking for. Hey, all in all, this is a great tabletop here. It's fun to play on. And uh, I'm sure uh, it'll get some use in this household. Thanks for watching The Rexer Show.
Broadcasting from their world headquarters in Texas, it's the Arcade Repair Tips Live Show. The show that discusses arcade repair, restoration, news, and more. Now, here are your hosts, Tim and Jonathan. Hello everybody and welcome to episode 62 of the Arcade Repair Tips Live Show for April 2022. My name is Jonathan Leung, the producer, director, and editor of the Arcade Repair Tips video series. And joining me today, as always, is Mr. Arcade Repair Tips himself, Tim Pearson. Tim, how you doing? Hey John, I'm uh, adjusting my hair, coming in from all this wind here in Texas. I don't know what the deal is, but it seems like every day we got this uh, 30, 40 mile an hour wind. Uh, I guess a good day to be a uh, good time to be a kite flyer here, but I'm not used to all this wind. And if you don't, if you're not competing with the wind, Tim, then you're competing with the pollen. Right. <laughs> and that's also been an issue here. But luckily, Tim, hopefully you've got a nice uh, pass for your uh, car to get it washed every, you know, three days or something like that, and you're doing yep. okay. So your shirt was white before you. That's right. Before right? I walked in, that's <laughs> exactly in correct. So, what it looks like. Well, guys, we want to thank you for joining us tonight. We got a lot of questions on the board here tonight, Tim, that we're going to be discussing. We want to thank you again for being here. We know you have other things that you could be watching, Tim. Today is MLB Opening Day for those yes. people who are baseball fans like myself. I thought it would never come because we had some lockout stuff and everything like that, but I'm really looking forward to seeing some baseball. My team doesn't play till tomorrow, but uh, I've, I've been catching some of the games from earlier today. I'm very excited. So. Okay. Uh, but anyway, Tim, what have you been up to besides your normal job, working, other stuff? Um, just all over East Texas, you know, uh, we've had, it's typical time of year. We've had a lot of storms and tornadoes. We lost power the other day. But now that I drive all over East Texas with my job, um, I've seen a lot of t storm damage, and some of this stuff is pretty amazing to see huge trees uprooted and um, stuff like that. So um, other than that, just working and doing my normal stuff. You know, it's always something around the house to fix or do. As you know, Jonathan, being a homeowner, um, there's always something going on. But um, and having a good spring so far. Absolutely. Sounds good, Tim. Well, uh, we have, a, like I said, Tim, I already mentioned we have quite a few questions to go over tonight, guys. But we also have the live chat. And if you guys were here with us right before the show started, Tim, you may have noticed that there was yes. a video mm -hmm. playing as part of our countdown to the live show. And we want to thank uh, the Regzer Show here on YouTube for allowing us to show his video. Make sure you guys check out his channel and sign up. He's got some great videos over there. Great arcade-related videos, we should mention, Tim. Mm -hmm. So a lot of you guys who are interested in that kind of stuff will obviously like it. So uh, def definitely check out the Regzer Show on YouTube. He's got some great content there. And he's also in the live chat with us tim which we want to appreciate we appreciate you for catching the show tonight we also got silly sausage 72 he says cheers from california tim all right we got uh, tim d6 is here we've got omega mark he says just in time for the video uh with the intro while waiting yep that's exactly right so that's new uh tim we got a new setup here uh -huh. so i got a new laptop running windows 11 which i don't know if that's a good or a bad <laughs> thing yet we'll find out but we have made a couple of uh, updates and changes well uh, i don't know how many of those you'll actually see on your end but on the back end side we've made a couple uh, we have Nate Berg here. He says, greetings from Nova Scotia, Tim. Wow. We've got, let's see, Omega says, greets from uh, New York. We have Boom Go Pinball says, finally made it to the show. Thanks okay. for being here tonight. That's awesome. Uh, Real Hammer Billy Lee is here, Tim. He says, hello, hello. Hey, Billy. We got, mm -hmm. uh, let's see, Nate says, just want to give you fellas a heads up. Since last stream, I ordered um, some chips to fix my force feedback board on my rush. We narrowed it down to that, and I'm waiting on them. Okay, Nate. Well, let mm -hmm. us know once you get those chips in how it goes for the repair. So hopefully you can replace those and you'll be back up and running. Uh, Mr. Dwayne 79 is here, Tim. He says, what's up, guys? Hello, Dwayne. Mm -hmm. And then we have NTR president here as well, and he says, greetings. Uh -huh. So we want to thank you guys again for joining us. Remember that you can leave your comments and questions in the live chat while the show goes on. We will try to address those in between the questions, Tim, that we normally answer here. So uh, if you have anything, please let us know. Um, uh, Joe Flores is here as well, Tim. So we got him. So there we go. Now, Tim, before I get to questions, though, we've been running a special to kind of get people started on their Arcade Repair Tips DVD series collection. Okay. So right now for a limited time, and this is a very limited limited quantity, Tim, we've already sold quite a few. I don't, I'm not sure how many we have left at this price, but right now you can get our Volume 1 DVD, the disc only, which comes in a nice white paper sleeve, Tim. 
for $8 while supplies last. Limited quantities available. You can purchase your copy at the link there, Tim. We also have it down in the show description for those of you guys who want to click on it. You don't want to necessarily copy down that link right there. That $8, Tim, includes shipping to the continental 48 states of the United States wow. of America. So that does actually include shipping for most of you guys who are watching this. Of course, if you live outside the continental 48 states of the United States, then you need to send us an email and let us know so we can quote you a shipping cost on that. But Tim, this is pretty much the best price I think we've ever offered on this particular DVD and it's a great way for you to get your collection started Tim as a lot of people may know we have four volumes Tim mm -hmm. okay so you can get the first one here start that collection off right and then you know buy the second one buy the third one buy the fourth one right so I mean we've got some great content there Tim content you won't find on YouTube That's all right. three or all four of our volumes I should say have content that you will not find on our YouTube channel so if you want some extra content uh, make sure that you check out our DVDs and get started by ordering your volume one DVD for eight dollars which is again that's the best price I think we've ever offered on yeah it. so uh, but if you guys are interested in that link is below in the show notes it'll take you to a PayPal link you just you can either sign in or use your card to pay and once you've done that we'll ship them out tim i like i said i think i've shipped out half of what we have allocated for that offer okay so uh, you guys might want to hurry if you still want to cash in on that because we only have half of what we of what we allocate for that left so good deal yeah so good stuff there but uh we love our dvds tim uh, we love when you guys buy them uh, it's some great content there to be found so well, Tim, I think we're all caught up in the live chat, and I've made all my announcements. Okay. So let us go on with the actual outline, Tim. And the first question we have here is from Anthony. And Anthony says, Hi, I have a Tekken 3 arcade I bought from a place in Indiana. They shipped it to me, and it worked fine for a day, but now the, the picture goes out. It says no signal. When it loads up, and you can hear, you can still hear the audio. The picture will come back at certain points and then it'll go back down. The CRT has been replaced with a regular screen going to a converter board. I replaced all the boards in there, including the JAMA. I also changed the VGA board and it's still doing the same thing. I don't know if I should just try to go back to a CRT setup or what. Okay, so Tim, we have Anthony here and he's got a Tekken 3 and it sounds like he bought it from some company in Indiana. He didn't mm -hmm. name the company. And so I assume shipping was probably involved. I don't know, maybe he lives in Indiana. Not for sure. Maybe. But obviously there's a moving of the game. Mm -hmm. And so he gets it home and it plays well for a while and then all of a sudden it starts saying no signal on the board. Okay, so uh, we, he knows that using the converter board setup Tim, I'm going to assume that we're probably using the Gombus 8200 series video yeah, converter. Like that, that seems to be the most common one that we see. And so that's probably what's in there along with some sort of LCD. Could be an off-the-shelf, could be commercial grade, we're not for sure. But Tim, no signal on the monitor. Whenever we're getting that kind of symptom, what are we looking at here with Anthony's Tekken 3? Well, usually um, if you're getting no signal, it means you usually have a, like a board or a computer out. And that's when you would tell them, well, but he can hear it. Right, correct. So that's the difference here. The fact that he hears it, we know his board is probably working. And the monitor works at some point, um, although it wouldn't be a bad idea to maybe hook it up to a computer or something, just to make sure it's not having some kind of internal monitor problem shut down sure. or whatever. But more than likely, there's either something wrong with that board, that converter board, or it's in some type of connection going from that board to his monitor. Yeah, and Tim, uh, we've talked about some of the kind of like cheap Chinese boards, kind of like the 61 before, and these Gombus boards seem to be the same way, Tim. It mm -hmm. seems like we have, sometimes we have really great luck with them, and then other times we just don't. And so it wouldn't surprise us, me if he had a bad video converter board here. No, me and either. We've seen that quite a bit where we get this no signal from the uh, from the converter board, Tim. But like you said, the fact that the, the monitor is saying no signal means the monitor is probably working, correct? Yeah, the, the monitor is probably working, especially it's usually floating around or it'll just say there on the screen, no signal. Uh, so sometimes there, you, it just could be a setting. Uh, I know there's a switch on the board that you can press. Uh, it may be something like that. He needs to go into that and see if he can um, go into the settings of that board. And if he can't get into the settings or anything, then he's probably got a bad board. Gotcha. Okay, Tim, well, let us go ahead and show our little outline here. 
So the most common video converter board that we've seen is the Gombus 8200 series, Tim, and uh, sometimes they're 8220. There's a couple of different variations on this board, Tim, but basically they're all this GBS 8200 series. Now we're assuming that's probably what's installed in your cabinet here, Anthony. Uh, try hitting the SW button and you can actually see it, Tim, on the diagram here. Mm -hmm. I outlined it in red so he knew which one it was. And uh, you can and see if it helps the issue. So it kind of does like an auto adjust on it. Right. So he can try that and see if that helps. Um, you can also try going into the on-screen settings and seeing if there's any adjustments that can help. Sometimes adjusting the geometry settings, Tim, can solve the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, we've actually seen that before. Um, we've also seen these boards have issues from the factory, like we've talked about, Tim. So it's possible you have a bad one. You may try another one or a different brand. And Tim, so I put an eBay link here and you'll also find it down in the show description. But this eBay link actually goes to a different converter board that does the exact same thing, a different okay. branded one. And so it comes from China. So, you know, it's going to slow go from China, Tim. It's going right. to take a while to get to you. But it's only like $25. And so if you just want to try a totally different converter board altogether, that's fine. Uh, if you are going to buy the Gombus like 8200 series, I would suggest buying it from a, a supplier that allows you to return it. Uh, right. Tim, we know that Holland Computers actually has these. And yeah. so Holland, if you buy like a replacement from Holland Computers, a lot of times they will allow you to return it if you have an issue with it. So, Anthony, if you wanted to try to replace this verter, uh, video converter board, you could try buying a replacement from Holland, putting it in the game, see if it works. If it doesn't, at least that way you can return it back to them and get your money back on it. Awesome. Okay. So, I mean, if you want to try another Gombus model, or if you want to try that eBay model, which is just slightly different than the Gombus one that most people use, um, then that's fine as well. But I think, uh, you know, try the adjustments first, kind of like we talked about on, on the actual converter board itself. See if you can get it working. Hit that SW switch. Maybe try some of the on-screen display stuff and see if it if it helps at all. Tim, do you have any more suggestions for Anthony? No, I don't think so. But um, by all means, keep us in the loop and feel free to write us back with any additional questions or uh, if there's something you didn't understand or or tell us what you did if to fix it we'd love to hear back from you absolutely so anthony hopefully it answers your question and good luck getting the signal back on that tekken 3 arcade game and tim Tekken, one of my favorite games, mm -hmm. all the way up to tag tournament, like the first tag yeah. tournament, I have all those boards, Tim. I have a Tekken 1, 2, 3, and tag tournament board. Uh, I have a Tekken cabinet here in the in the, in the the game room, and I love that game, Tim. It's one of my favorites. So hopefully you can get it working and play some Tekken. Tekken 3, Tim, is very fun. Very mm -hmm. fun. I remember playing in the arcades, golly, when it first came out. So anyway, so uh, Tim, let us go ahead and check in with the live chat real quick. Paul Jure is here. He says, hey, guys. Hey, Paul. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Joe says he just bought volume one. He says, thank you. So there you go. That's nice. Uh, let's see. Michael Bloom says, uh, see if the LCD is set to the right input, if it's connected to the board via VGA, but the LCD is set to DVI or HDMI, whatever, no signal detected. And that's a good point. You want to make sure that you have it configured for the right output. In most cases, Tim, it should be configured for VGA, which is what most people use. Mm -hmm. But if you're using HDMI or DVI, make sure that you have it set to that input so that it's coming out properly. Uh, let's see. King Cox says, I love you. I love your, I love you guys show. You guys are the best. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Thanks for being here. Awesome to have you. Nate says, question. I have a CRT that got new caps, new flyback, however, and the anode cup got cut. So rather than buying a new flyback, we took a broken flyback and used its anode cup, but it no longer it no longer suctions. The monitor works well, except when uh, there's any shaking of the machine gets slightly dimmer unless I shake it again. I assume it's due to the anode cup not suctioning. Tim, what do you think? Oh, that's an interesting question because I'll, uh, I'll be honest. I don't know that I've ever uh, come across that. We've seen um, it before. I've seen, I've seen the anode connected without a cup. I've seen it be really loose. Yeah, yeah, I have seen it Yeah, with a cup completely gone. Right, and I think that's what we're talking about here. It sounds like basically it's just connected with the cup gone. And the cup is kind of there to hold it in place. Yeah. So it's not uncommon that if you shake a little bit that it may not make a great connection in there. Uh, if you can find a cup replacement, we would re recommend it. So just so it keeps it in place there. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, as long as you're not shaking it too much, it should stay pretty steady. And you may try clipping it in there a little bit better, maybe separating yeah, out those Yeah, I was anodes. just thinking about taking a pair of needle nodes and kind of separating the, the end a little bit to make it really tight in there. Exactly. Just be careful, of course. Yeah, and that should help a little bit with, you know, it moving around once mm -hmm. it's in the tube. But um, if you can find a replacement suction cup, probably the best solution, right, Tim? Yeah, probably so. That's Same. a... That's a pretty interesting one. Uh, not very often. 
Yeah, he says, can I use something to put around it or do I need another flyback? Uh, you may be able to find just the cup part because just the cup part comes off, if I remember correctly, too. Yeah. So you may be able to find just the little cup that goes over the anode for that. Um, you may be able to remove it from mm -hmm. another one. If not, Probably you so. may have to do flyback. Um, in fact, you know, I know um, Paul's here. I don't know if Paul's ever messed with that. We may ask him as well if he's got any suggestions for that. So. That's pretty interesting, though. Yeah. Uh, King Kong, K, how can I test if a CRT is getting power from the power supply to see if the power supply isn't working before I repair the CRT chassis? Um, so you can test it wherever it comes into the monitor. So typically you'll have a plug uh, that comes from either an isolation transformer, right, Tim, or comes directly mm -hmm. from your from your AC voltage that'll go up to the monitor, and you can test where those where that uh, where those two wires connect to your chassis and just ch test the voltage right there. And uh, Tim, sometimes there'll be a fuse that you can right. test the voltage at as well, like right around there, depending on which model monitor that you're looking at. But wherever that power so power comes into your chassis, if you will test that with just regular old AC voltage on your meter, Tim, and just make sure you're getting 120 there. That way you'll know that your input voltage is correct. I mean, that's the easiest way to do it. Uh, Tim, any other suggestions? Oh, uh, Just maybe where it comes. A lot of times there'll be a connection going to the monitor, like a bridge in the middle. Uh, you could test it there also uh, to, without getting your hands up in the monitor. But that's probably the best place is right if, there where you're talking about. If you're going to do that, I would test it on the chassis side of that right. connector, not the opposite side of that connector, the power supply side. Exactly. Just to make sure that the connector is functioning properly. So if you're getting AC voltage on the chassis side of the connector, then it should be getting to the chassis okay, right? Yep. Sounds good. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Uh, let's see. Laundry Matt RK Joe said he just bought, uh, or is there a resource to find out what each convergence ring does for a particular monitor? Um, you can check out the manuals for those a lot of times and they will tell you what the individual, um, rings do on each monitor. So, um, I don't know if there's like a guide, just a general guide. We do have our, our, um, Ingvar Carlson, of course, did the setup and adjusting of a CRT monitor where he mm -hmm. talks about convergence in there quite a bit. And he, I think he does have some stuff in there about convergence and purity rings that you may want to check out. But for the most part, your best resource when it comes to that is going to be the actual manual for the monitor, right, Tim? I think so. But you're right. If he'll go to our resource page, right, that's where it's um, I think it's just called Setup and Adjusting a CRT Monitor. If you do a search for that on our page, uh, or Ingvar Carlson, if you do a search for Ingvar on our page, I-N-G-V-A-R, you will find his post about that. And he has a document there that has a lot of details about um, convergence in particular and setting up a CRT. Really great information if you haven't seen it already. But he does go into a little bit of that. Uh, I don't know if it's going to match up to your monitor in particular, but uh, you may check it out anyway because it does give you some helpful information. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's see. Uh, NTR President, quick question. What's the preferred LED replacement for the 555 and or 194, 161? Tim, any suggestions for any of those? What is the preferred LED, LED replacement, replacement for the 555 and or 194, 161, etc.? Just, um, I would just go with whatever... Um, uh, I guess I don't quite understand the question. So, so if you've got a 555 to... bulb, what kind of LED would you replace that with? Okay. What so kind of LED bulb would you replace we're that down, with? All right. Now I'm on the ball. On the ballpark. Okay. Um, so you just want to make sure that you get the closest voltage to them. Um, it's either going to be a 6 volt or a 12 volt. Um, everybody has preferences. Some people like theirs. Uh, my wife the likes that kind of, yeah, she kind of likes that bright. soft, and I like them. The brighter, the better. Right. Uh, SuperLEDs.com, I know, has some, but most of your pinball resource guys, like yep. we've talked about. Pinball Life. Pinball Life and, and people like that would probably be better to ask, and based on your preference, just got to make sure that the voltage is pretty pretty close. Yeah, I mean, to me, I like uh, soft, white, clear, not frosted um, LED. Uh, but you may bright. you may like bright white, um, frosted LED. Or you know, I mean, there's so many different variations of it. It really just depends on what you prefer. Uh, if you're looking for something original, Tim, I do feel like the soft white is probably more original. Bright white to me is almost too bright for most cases. Uh, and I like the clear versus like the the frosted um, cover on mm -hmm. those, or an open cover, depending. I mean, you don't have to have that bulb cover on there. It's so just it's funny bright. that there's so many variations. Um, maybe you could just uh, some guys might want to post what they like or prefer in the group but also you might just ask uh, if you go to a, a pinball festival or a game festival you see one just ask them hey what kind of where'd you get your light bulbs they'll probably be glad to tell you but they're really 
you know, 20 years ago, you might have had, or 15 years ago, you might have had one source. Now there's so many and so many, like you said, so many different variations. Um, you may even just get a sample of two or three different kinds from like Pinball Life or somebody like that. Put them in there and see which one you prefer the best, then order the rest that you like. But he's just probably talking about a couple bulbs. It's good to have extras. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. So kind of up to you, preference that you want to go with. So. Okay, let's see what else we have Busy here. Busy live chat That's today. That's good. Let's see. Um, cold Flesh and Fangs. I have a California Speed arcade machine that does not turn on. I bought a storage full of arcade machines, and I do, and do so far uh, bought, brought two, a virtual fire that works, but the California Speed does not turn on. Uh, let's see. All components seem to be there in the cabinet, too. So um, the California Speed does not turn on. I mean, typically, this is very common with these ATX-style power supplies like mm -hmm. California Speed is that they do go out. And so what you want to do is you want to turn on the game and check the voltage on the power supply, Tim. They're gonna, it's going to have a connector that you're going to need to disconnect, and then you're going to have to put your multimeter ends in. So you want to put the ground wire in usually where black pins are, right, Tim? Mm -hmm. And then your 5 volts should usually be a red wire, and your... Um, Plus 12 is a yellow wire, Usually correct? yellow or orange. Right. So you, that that will allow you to check. Now, if your power supply doesn't come on at all, of course, you found the problem at that point. So if you're not getting any power to it, which, like I said, very common on ATX-style mm -hmm. power supply for it to go out, especially with a game like California Speed. Tim, the NFL Blitz that I have over here mm -hmm. did the exact same thing. We bought it and it would not come on. Obviously, it was a power supply issue. And so if you're not getting anything, Tim, that's one of the easiest symptoms to really, to really conquer because a lot mm -hmm. of times it is a dead power supply. So let's start the power supply here uh, and and then just see where it goes from there check your voltage coming out if no voltage is going out then you'll need to get a replacement and suzohap.com has those you can get them from twisted quarter any other of any of the parts suppliers on our resources page at arcade repair tips.com slash resources should carry those atx style power supplies if you need help finding one send us a picture of it and we'll find you a replacement right tim yes are we good uh, let's see. I was going to say that it's kind of like one of my favorite things to fix is when I find a game that's completely dead. Right. It's usually an easier fix or easier to get going than one that's got some kind of monitor issues or like the one earlier where it's going in and out and not coming on half the time. Right. Paul says on the Nate question, you should solder the place, uh, you should solder the place to anode wire for a good connection. The piece. You should solder the piece to the anode wire for a good connection. Okay. That's what he's saying on that. So, uh, just to give Nate that information, let's see. Uh, Paul says, I have swapped many, never had one not stick of the yeah, anode. So, yeah. That's I kind mean, of a rare one to me. Absolutely. So, okay, let's see what we got here. Uh, okay. And somebody said, are you sure you don't have any cold solder joints? Um, on Nate's question about the flyback, probably not. It's more than likely I wouldn't be surprised if it's that anode, anode cup, Tim, mm -hmm. or the anode that's having the problem. But you can always touch up the solder it on that flyback as hurt. well. Definitely wouldn't hurt. So uh, let's see. Um, Michael says he uses the non-ghosted LED bulbs, Tim. Uh, he uses the color of whatever it was under. To me, colored bulbs look better than the plain white. Some people like that. You can mm -hmm. go green. You could go red. Yeah, you know, I like, I've got this nice green team holding on my Galaga. You may mm -hmm. want to do that down on the bottom, too. Oh. I like those uh, behind the coin door that are, like, if it's red, to put a red bulb in there, and it really kind of does make it really glow. Absolutely. Uh, YouTube on Terry says, howdy, everyone. Hello. What's mm -hmm. up? Nate's back with another question, Tim. This is another issue on a CRT. I had the CRT that turned off, didn't turn on when I went to check voltages and check good for the, a whole five seconds, then went down slowly while black smoke came came from the machine to make sure that that never happens again. What did I do wrong? Someone said I may have shorted the flyback, uh, or I may have shorted it, the flyback melted. So, um, yeah, that does sound like probably you may have shorted the flyback. Yeah, something... Something got, something got, um, something got shorted. I would say that probably one of the pins underneath was touching something, or if some solder was touching somewhere else and... Yeah, it's, um, let's see, he says, I'm going to reread it here. This is another issue on CRT. Mm -hmm. uh, turned off when I went to check the voltages and check good for a whole five seconds. Then it went down slowly. So when you were checking the voltages, did you push down on the chassis at all? Um, because if you did, there's a, there's a chance that it may have made contact. We all know that the, um, typically, Tim, the chassis is kind of held up off of the little metal platform mm -hmm. with like little risers. If you push down too hard, I mean, or just hard enough, it that could have been that the solder actually made contact with that metal plate that's at the bottom and could have caused the short. 
Could have. Very possible. That's a good theory. <laughs> yeah, so if you melted the flyback, obviously the flyback is going to have to be replaced. We know that, but you may have done damage to other parts as well. Like we talked about the hot, may have been some other things. So, I mean, at that point, I think what we would probably do is start with the flyback. I'd call Paul at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I would probably start with the flyback and then kind of go from there and see how it works. Um, and just make sure I didn't... I would also check for any shorted or bridge connections, Tim, that may have yeah, occurred. Yeah, something, something shorted out is what it sounds like. Right. So it, check the whole chassis. Make sure that nothing is um, bridged <laughs> or shorted in any way. Because, I mean, it may have been, like I said, when we pressed down on it, we may have shorted something or we shorted across something. It's possible. So... Um, uh, but other than that, Tim, I can't think of uh, replacing the flybacks, obviously number one priority because we know it's shorted. Um, but you also need to figure out what, what else may have caused that. So tracing back to the hot and back through there may not be a bad idea either. Uh, so, uh, and like I said, it, Paul can jump in with some other stuff. He may be better at this, Tim, than we are as far as mm-hmm. that is concerned. So let's see. Uh, King Conk, I hooked up my Pandora's box into my JAMA harness in a Sega Astro City and the speakers stopped working after two weeks. Do you have a recommendation for a good super gun? I am going to purchase your DVDs, by the way. Any ideas? So, not sure why the audio went out um, after you hooked up the Pandora's box. The Pandora's box boards are pretty generic for the most part. So, I mean, it should have worked fine um, unless the audio just went out on the board. Kind of like we talk about with the 16 ones, the Pandora's box boards are not the best made. Mm-hmm. They're kind of cheap. So, I mean, it's possible that the audio just went out. What you can do is a lot of times there is a speaker out on the on different versions of the Pandora's box. So, you may try hooking some headphones or a speaker up to that port to see if you're getting yeah. sound that way. You could also try hooking up another JAMA board to see if sound comes through. This will let you know whether or not you have a speaker problem or a board problem, right, Tim? Right. So that'll kind of give you the idea. As far as super guns go, we really don't use super guns because we have JAMA cabinets, so we just plug into JAMA cabinets typically. But, I mean, as long as the super gun has the proper JAMA wiring standard that you're trying to support for whatever board you want to hook up to it, you should be fine. I mean, for the most part, I mean, they're all... It's pretty simple, Tim. It's a power supply. It's a JAMA harness. It's too... Like it's two, um, or it's one or two control panels. I mean, mm-hmm. it's basically an arcade game without the cabinet. So okay. it's basically what you have with super guns. So as far as a preference for one or another, we really don't. But maybe somebody in the um, live chat has one, Tim, maybe. that they would suggest to you. But for us, I mean, we usually, like I said, we typically just plug into JAMA cabinets. We don't typically use super guns just because, you know, if you got a cabinet. Yeah, right. that's what we like to play on. Now, I understand people not wanting to play on that, and that's perfectly fine. Super guns are a great solution for people who don't want the bulk of a cabinet or just want the ease of being able to plug in things. So, But uh, wish I had an answer as far as what we recommend, but we just don't have enough experience with super guns today. Right. So, uh, let's see. Oh, he says, yes, I'm using that speaker out as well. Um, just check for voltage going in. Oh, okay, that's Nate. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, Paul on Nate's question about, he says, flyback is toast, check the hot. Yeah. So there. I like it when Paul um, comes back with exactly what I said. It makes me feel smart. So <laughs> thank, you, thank you, Paul, for that. Um, but Tim, I think we finally caught up. I think That's so. some exciting live chat. You guys are all over the place tonight. We love it. Um, we love questions during the show, Tim. We never try to shy away from those. We don't always have all the answers right at our fingertips, but we try our best to answer them as as accurately as possible. So uh, we want to thank you guys for, for chiming in and asking your questions and... Uh, we try to give you the best answer, like I said, and uh, hopefully we did with those tonight, Tim. I think so. With us caught up, let us move on through our outline, Tim, with Scott's question. And Scott says, I'm trying to repair my brother's Wizard of War upright cabinet arcade game, which has a scrambled screen. He said the problem began with only the top inch or so of the screen, and the bad area of the screen would eventually stop start working properly after the game had been running a while. Now the screen is like this full time. I can press the coin switch and the game responds properly. I can press the start button and begin playing the game. The sounds tell me that the game is working properly. A sticker on the back of the monitor says it is a Wells Garner 19K4616 monitor. I removed and replaced the different plug-in wiring connections from the board in the bottom of the cabinet up to the monitor, but it didn't help. I've also tried adjusting the knobs on the board at the end of the neck tube, and while it does adjust the color and brightness of the screen, it doesn't affect the basic pattern of the lines. This pattern does change as the game goes through the different screens in the demo mode, so the board seems to be trying to send data to the screen. Do you have any suggestions what might be what it might be? Thanks, Scott. So I actually have a picture from Scott Tim. This is what his okay. Wizard of War looks like. Um, it's pretty. It's a pretty um, pretty common 
look for an arcade game, Tim, that we see, especially mm-hmm. with older arcade games. Uh, Tim, I think this would be known as Out of Sync. Yes. Is, is... is probably the best way that we could say it. And so, Tim, with all the information that we just gave you, uh, what do you think is going on with Scott's Wizard of War arcade game? Yeah, it definitely seems like it's Out of Sync. Uh, I'm hearing that tune go through my head right now. I love Wizard of War. Uh, that dun, 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 you know, <laughs> yeah. thing that it plays. Because so, he can hear it. Right. So that's a good sign that you can hear it and you know the game is playing. But you got to find the knobs and stuff to adjust the frequency. The hold adjustments are what you're really looking for. So it's just kind of out of hold. It's pulling uh, one way and the other and you're getting this uh, diagonally or uh, out of sync pattern is what we would call that. Now, um, he says he's tried some of the adjustments, Tim. I don't know if he specifically tried the hold or the He said frequency. on the neck board, and remember, those have them on the boards, the cards right. themselves. It's 4,600, right? Yes. So he on you got to check uh, some of the, the some areas on there, and it may need that it's time for a repair. Uh, probably one of the easier monitors. Paul might disagree. I know a 40, 4,600 to me has always been one of the easier monitors to work on because you could take the cards out yes. and work on them on the bench and then pop them back in. Um, we so, would keep quite a few spare cards around right. just for that. So, I mean, it, it is handy. You may not have spare cards, though, and if you don't, there are some things that you can check, right, Tim? Yeah, and you can do, you know, check your B-plus voltage, stuff like that, and you can do a cap kit on it if you need to. But um, but there's some weird knobs and stuff, and I don't have the 4600 um, schematic in front of me or the knobs adjustment. But if you find a manual one, it'll show you where those knob placements are. You really want to dial in on the hold adjustments on that. Sounds good. So Tim, I'm actually going to throw up our slide here okay. so we can kind of go over it. From your picture, like Tim mentioned, it does look like uh, this is out of sync. So your arcade cabinet monitor is out of sync. Try adjusting the seek frequency and hold adjustments on the chassis to make sh- to see if it helps the issue. Also, make sure that the B plus voltage on your monitor is correct. On this one, Tim, it should be set to 127 volts DC. Okay. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. Now, if all of that is correct and everything and the adjustments just don't help, then you're probably having a problem with the sync circuit on the monitor chassis. And so, Tim, I looked this up, of course. K4600 monitor, you need to check transistors TR201 through TR203 and transistor TR210 and TR308. Might think about a cap kit as well. Tim, you mentioned that if you don't want to do a whole cap kit, at least replace C315. Good. Okay, so if you're not going to do the whole thing, at least replace C315. That has a lot of problems. That can cause a lot of problems with sync issues. So I'll leave this up here for just a second here, Scott. But, I mean, it just really depends on if the sink is at the monitor end or if it's at the board end. Now, it could be that the board is having issues actually putting out like a solid sink. In that case, you're going to have to have a board repair. You can try some of the stuff that we talk about in our post on uh, inspecting an arcade board, Tim. Um, But, a lot, Tim, I would say 75% of the time this is a monitor issue and 25% of the time we see this as a board issue. That sounds pretty reasonable. So, I mean, that's just... You know, like I said, that's just kind of, that's, that's from our experience, that seems what it is. So, I mean, 75% of the time when we see an out-of-sync picture, we're thinking bore, we're thinking chassis or wiring. Yes. Um, the rest of the time, very, it's possible it can be a board issue, but it's rare. So, um, but uh, again, uh, try those adjustments. If not, let's look at some parts on that K4600 chassis and hopefully that can get you back up and going. Tim, anything else for Scott before we move on? No, I don't think so. The live show is still popping over there. Yeah, so we'll go back <laughs> to the live chat here while we have a moment, but uh, before I do that, I want to say, Scott, hopefully answers your question and good luck getting the sync back going on your Wizard of War arcade cabinet. Okay, let us go back here. Uh, let's see. Um... Michael says, Wizard of War. Now, that's a game. That's a name I've not heard in a long time. Mm-hmm. I love the Obi-Wan Kenobi references. Always great. Let's see. Um, clickety-clack. Did I miss the Crimson World question? No, it's coming up. So hold on. We'll, we'll be getting that here in a second. Uh, Cold Flesh and Fang says, I have a Nintendo Super System arcade, and the CRT does not turn on, but I can hear sound. Any idea what the issue could be? Um, so you have a playing blind there. Uh, cold fangs and flesh so playing blind typically means that you know it's something on the high voltage line so i mean it could be fuses hot flyback uh, it could be other things as well uh, check out our video on um um troubleshooting games that are playing blind yeah that would be your very first stop for that cold fangs and flesh so watch that video that'll give you some ideas of what kind of repair you're going to be in for on that monitor and if you need additional help 
take a picture of your chassis of what your monitor looks like on the back and we can help you identify it a little bit better. Uh, Paul says there's a hidden pot for horizontal on the 4600. Yes, he is correct. And mm. I can't remember exactly where it is, but it is kind of hidden and it's really hard to see. Yeah, that's um, why I so, said you almost have to, I'd have to have that uh, diagram in front of me. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. So that is the one I think that Tim was also talking about as well. So make sure you adjust that horizontal adjustment. I think it's in the near the middle of the chassis. I can't I'm not going to say that because I'm not for sure. If I could send a pic, I would. Uh, Paul, if you send that to questions at arcaderepairtips.com, we can see it real quick. So if you have a pic of what that, where that horizontal is, and I, I'll just, I'll send it over to Scott. That way, he'll have a copy of it whenever he needs it. So, right. um, but questions at arcaderepairtips.com if you want to send that over. Okay, Tim, let us move on to Larry. Hey guys, great website. I think it's great that you're so willing to help people with their issues on arcade machines. Mad props, Tim. Okay. Oh, it's good to hear that. Mm -hmm. I have a multi cade arcade that I picked up a while back and has worked great for about a year now, but recently I found that I am getting discoloration on the screen that runs vertically on my CRT monitor. I was wondering if you could tell me where to look for solutions on fixing it, if it's something that can be fixed or needs to be replaced. The picture makes the discoloration look brighter than what it really is. Thanks in advance for your feedback. I really appreciate it. So, Tim, he's got a, a multi cade here. And you can see the green... Yeah, this is the actual picture yes, of it Yes, this here, is huh? an actual picture of what he sent us. Mm -hmm. And you can see the green stripe in there. Right. See that? So, uh, Tim, this is a little bit different. So I actually sent this one over to Michael. Uh -huh. um, but I wanted to get your thoughts. I mean, what do you think should, is going on? But we only have this little green streak in the middle. We really don't have it on the rest of the monitor. Um, it seems like that's always been something a cap kit would do and replace. I, I don't sure what cap... But uh, I think that's a cap issue. A lot of times when we've seen like discoloration in certain areas of the monitor mm -hmm. or we have like parts cut out of the monitor, it seems like cap kits are, are, are one of the things that we see a lot as a solution for that. Mm -hmm. Tim, I'm going to go ahead though and kick it over to Michael. He did not send us a video for this one, but he did send back a response and I okay. want to go ahead and read his. So we consulted our monitor repair expert, Michael, and here's his response. There's a 90% chance this chassis has a bad cap. Ninety okay. percent. Okay, and that's from Michael. It also could be a leaky diode or a drive transistor. So I love his I love his suggestion here, Tim. Swap out the red or blue transistor with the green and see if the problem stays the same. Okay, this is a great suggestion. So, uh, Tim, we talk about this on our checking a monitor tube video. We talk about drive transistors. So what he's talking about is that you have a red and a blue and a green drive transistor. What you want to do is try to take the red one out, take the green one out, and swap them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if the problem stays the same, then the di then try the diodes as well, okay? If the discoloration changes colors, then you you found a defective part. So basically, if you change and now you've got a red streak going, okay. then we know that, okay, it's got to be in the transistors. But if right. not, we need to check the diodes as well and see if they're having issues. That's a great idea. If nothing changes, then you would recommend a cap kit. Uh, check resistors on the neck board as well. Of course, um, as always here, Larry, let us know the make and model of the chassis. We can give you uh, location numbers or more information of places where you need to check. This issue is almost always caused by bad parts on the neck board. Okay, that's good to narrow it down that much. Yeah, so so for Larry, for Larry here, let's narrow it down. It's something on the neck board, almost always on the neck board. Cap kit's not a bad idea, like you said, Tim. And and like t and like uh, Michael mentioned, ninety percent chance this chassis has a bad cap. Ninety okay. percent. So more than likely, Tim, this monitor's been running for thirty years and probably has never had any work right. done on it. And so parts are just beginning to fail. So in this particular case, um, if I'm Larry, I try to do what uh, Michael's talking about here. I swap the drive transistors in the di transistors in the diodes and see if I can figure out where the color issue is. Mm -hmm. After I figure that out, I still do the cap kit. Yeah, me too. You know, too. I mean, that's kind of what it comes down to. Because it sounds like we're just, this thing's got a lot of miles on it, Tim. Mm -hmm. And it's about time that we do, you know, we replace the transmission or engine or other things on this thing to make sure that it continues to run well for us. So, um, how's that? What do you think? You got anything to add uh, to Michael's response here for Larry? No, but I'm glad that, that what I, my first gut reaction was that's a bad cap somewhere. Yeah. But I wasn't, but him saying that it's, probably on the neck board that really could narrow it down too yeah exactly really quick i mean when you're talking about colors tim a lot of times we know sure. that the color adjustments a lot of times are on the neck board and so uh when we're having like little color issues like this it's, it it makes sense that we would have issues on the neck board sure. that'd be causing it so but still again you still want to do the cap kit like michael said 90 yep. percent chance you got a bad cap as well so there we go 
So Larry, hopefully answers your question and good luck getting that green stripe out of, and Tim, depending on Larry, he may just want to leave it like that till it mm-hmm. dies. I don't know. <laughs> so it's kind of up to you, Larry. But if you want to go to all the work of actually taking it apart, working on it and everything like that, I think we've given you a great place to or start. Or he might just switch the transistors and have a red stripe for a while and balance yeah, yeah, it Yeah, out. exactly. Depending yeah, well, on the season. If it, it, well, if the red, tra- if it goes over, Tim, then you can just replace it, the transistor. That's you right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, you, don't have, you just buy some new transistors. You're good to go. Uh-huh. So. Anyway, hopefully that helps Larry out, Tim. Uh, Next, and it looks, are we cut up? Let's see. Oh, Danny says, hey guys, hope you're doing good. Sorry I'm so late. Danny, there's no such thing as late here. Right. So in fact, in fact, even, yeah, exactly. Even if you're late, you can watch it after the fact. That's right. I mean, you know, so there's no late. It's just, you know, you're here. We're glad you're here. So, okay. Uh, And he says, good to see you guys again. Good to see you too. So, and look, we're not even halfway through the questions, are we? Just barely. We just got to the halfway point. All right. Plenty of time. So, okay, Tim, let us move on to Isaac, I think is our next okay. one. Okay, let me do this. Oh, by the way, so um, the um, the title Wizard of Gunner Feedback, Tim. So we um, it comes from three questions tonight. So okay. the first one was Wizard, Wizard of War. War. I okay, figured that So that's much. where the wizard came from. The Gunner part of it comes from this, this question one. from Isaac. Okay. So, um, hello, your video tutorials are great, informative, fun. Thank you. I have a question on a Commando arcade cabinet. According to the store that has it, the game works fine, but the gunner sprite doesn't show up. What do you think is the issue there? It's not playing completely blind, but I haven't heard of just the character sprite not showing up. Is this a repair that's worth it if the game can be bought for a good price? What do you think would be a good price for it? Uh, What do you think a good price for it would be? And estimate on possible repair scenarios. Thank you. Isaac. So, Tim, we have Isaac here, and it sounds like he may be getting into his first four-way into owning an arcade game. Right. Okay, and so he found this commando, which he is in good shape, except that you can't see your little shooter guy, which okay. is a real problem if you're trying to play the game. Okay. Mm-hmm. So um, so you got to fix this game in order to play this game, right, Tim? Right. Like we talked about here. So, uh, Tim, let's talk about this. What kind of repair are we looking at here for this commando, and what kind of pricing do you think he should go in at if he wanted to buy it and fix it? Okay. We, anytime we talk about pricing, it's all subjective. It's kind of like a baseball card. What's it really worth it depends on you, you know, and what you're willing to spend and what they're willing to take for it. I would definitely use it as a bargaining tool because it's not working 100%. Uh, think of it like an automobile. If you go to pick one up and they tell you, well, it runs and drives good, but uh, don't drive it at night because it has no lights. Well, it could be a light bulb or it could be a a multitude of things. So we always kind of want to think about the worst case scenario that's causing this. And more than likely, it sounds like it's a bad, uh, I guess that would be a RAM chip, John. Uh, It could be RAM, could be ROM. Uh, It's a board issue. It's a board issue. Board issue. Uh, More than likely, uh, it could be just a a simple chip replacement and you're back up and going. But more than likely, it's going to be something a little deeper than that could be some lifted traces on the board so my estimate would be what would it cost to replace that board right. that's where i would try to think because you don't know if you can if you're good at board repair that could be a 30 to 100 dollar fix and because you know what you're doing and you're good at it and you can fix that or you may have to send it off and it, i would say it's a couple hundred dollars um or you might just it might be really difficult you might have to replace that board for three four hundred dollars whatever they go for these days so that's kind of where i would judge what my worst case scenario would be that it's never going to work and i'm going to have to get another board that's how i would negotiate that so let's say they want a thousand dollars and i'm thinking that my worst case scenario is four hundred dollars i definitely would want it for less than that so if you're, they're asking, he didn't say what the asking price no, was, he did he? He was just asking what, what we thought it was worth. And so um, it's not a super sought after game. Uh, I'm sure so it I'm has. So I'm going to give you this information. Okay. At Texas Pinball Festival last weekend, a really nice, almost fully restored commando went for $600. Okay. Okay, that's, so I'm giving you that information. That's kind of what I would think a top of the line one would go for. Sure. So now we're down uh, negotiating on that price. Um, it is playable. I mean, you can have some fun with it, but definitely not um, 100%. So we're looking at least half of that, $300 or less, is what I would I would probably go in around 150 to 
Sounds That's good. just an estimate. So I did do some research on commando boards, Tim, and I know um, I'm going to throw the slide up here so people can see this. Okay. Those 2114 RAM chips, Tim, um, okay. they tend to go bad. They have they have issues, and so um, like we talked about, it is a board issue. You can try checking the power supply, make sure the voltage is correct. That's something we always recommend when we're dealing with board mm-hmm. problems. And you can check out our post on inspecting an arcade board for some tips that will help. So on the board repair, though, check all the 2114 RAM on the bottom uh, PCB because these tend to go bad. And when they do, then all of a sudden you can't load up things from your ROM chips right into into memory. And so um, a lot of times people will literally like take all of these out and reseat them. Mm hmm just to see sometimes people just go ahead and replace them all just depending so we do want you can check them all too you can just check to see if they're getting voltage and if they're working properly and if they're not you can replace as needed um tim you mentioned character rom could be that if the character rom is bad then obviously we can't load the sprite from the character rom into memory and so it could be that there are also some character ram chips on the board as well so Uh check the character ram and rom section on the board make sure that all those chips are working properly and you don't have any kind of weird you know, damaged traces or, or, you know, any of that kind of stuff as well. Um, those would be the places to look as far as a board issue is concerned. And like Tim mentioned, we recently saw a fully work in commando go for 600 at Texas pinball festival, Tim. So board repair, probably two or $300, Tim. Guessing, probably. Yeah. That'd be a good if you, if you sent it off, if you weren't going to do it yourself, about two or 300, if the cabinet's in good shape, then you're looking around three to 400 would be reasonable. If the cabinet is in good shape. Right. Okay, so 300 would be half the price, basically. Half the price of what they're asking for. Um, you know, to be honest with you, 200 to 150 would be where I would want to get it. But mm-hmm. look, if you bought it for 300 and you sunk 200 in it, it'd be $500. You could still make $100 profit right. at the or end of the day. Or would you be happy with that amount spent out of your budget, you know? Right. Um, uh, Michael says uh, eBay has a working commando board for 275 Okay. Which is right in the in the middle of the pricing that I talked about on the board repair. So you could actually get a whole new board for about what I'm talking about on the repair side. So I mean, which wouldn't be a bad idea. And then you could try to repair this one and have a backup. Exactly, exactly. So, um, you know, that wouldn't be a bad idea at all, especially if it's a game you want to keep. So three to four hundred may be a little bit on the high side, but at the same time, you buy it for four hundred. You 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 buy a board for three seventy five. You're at six seventy five, Tim. I mean, if if the cabinet's in really good shape. Mm-hmm. then, I mean, you probably have what it's worth into it. Look, the cheaper you can get it, though, get it as right. cheap as you can. <laughs> exactly. But, I mean, if you're just talking, if we're talking about it from, like, a monetary, can I get back what I put into the yeah, cabinet? Yeah, and it's all relative. It, it, so a commando game at my uh, garage would probably stay about six months. I'd probably flip it. It's not something I, I would play it a little bit, but it'd be gone. Some other person that may be his grail, if it is, then spend the money while you can because there's just not a ton of them coming up. Exactly. So for sale, just really depends on you, Isaac. But I, I mean, I think you know, three to four hundred, or even I mean, two hundred, three hundred, really whatever it is worth, worth for you. I mean, I think even at four hundred, Tim, you're probably okay if it's something that you really love and you want to keep. But if it's me, Tim, I want to snag it around the three to two hundred dollar range, just yeah. because you know I want a little bit of a cushion. If I want to flip it, I want to be able to flip it. So I think so. Sounds good. Uh, let's see, uh, 19, uh, let's see, 19 K Fox says low miles, right? Ha ha. Right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So let's see. Um, Michael says commando is a super fun game. It is pretty fun. I've mm-hmm. actually played it and it, it's a fun game to play. Not my, not my favorite, but I mean, there's people out there like Tim mentioned that, um, mm-hmm. that love that game. So, I mean, more power to you if it's one of your, if it's one of your faves. So, Okay, so, so we got the gunner part of our title out of the okay. way, Tim, with that question. We have one more word, and that's feedback. Okay. And so that is with Kelly's question. So earlier somebody was asking, when are we going to get to the Cruising World question? Tim, okay. we're at the Cruising World question. This here one's from Kelly. So let's go ahead and put it up here. I just acquired my first arcade game, a Midway Cruising World sit-down. When I got it home and plugged it in, everything worked near flawlessly. After about an hour of play, the steering wheel started twitching back and forth. Now, if the steering wheel feedback motor is plugged in at all, the game will crank the steering wheel all the way to the left and hold it there as soon as it is powered on, but it will not boot at all. If I unplug the machine, turn it back on with the steering motor unplugged, it'll operate like normal. With this issue, would you suspect that the steering feedback motor is bad or the motor control board itself thank you for any help or insight you can provide kelly now 
Kelly, you've asked the right man. Uh, Tim here has a lot of experience with cruisins because yeah. you know he he had them at uh, he had them at Chuck E. Cheese for the longest time. Tim, did you have force feedback motors in those? Oh yeah, <laughs> every one of them. Okay, so Kelly, I mean, this is a pretty straightforward question here, Tim. Cruising world's working, but mm -hmm. the problem is, is that it's like my motor, my force feedback motor just went crazy. Now she, he or she, I'm not sure, but this person wants to know if if it's uh, if it's in the motor. Or is in the motor control board? Right. So what do you think, based on your experience, Tim, what's going on with uh, Kelly's Cruising World? Based on my experience is that with it unplugged, it plays, although it's going to be really loose. And you can play it, but it's not quite the same. Everybody knows you've got to have that feedback. Right. Um, as long as it plays like that, and then when you plug it in, it kind of goes berserk. There probably is a short or something in that motor. As probably a bad motor. So you don't think it's in the control board itself? No, uh, the only other thing it could have been uh, maybe would be the pot. And that's where I would unplug the motor. I would go into the settings and see if it will let you set and move. You know, you can tell if the pot is changing. Um, because sometimes a bad pot will cause some crazy issues. And when um, you're talking about pot, you're talking about the, the potentiometer pot for the steering wheel, correct? For the, for the actual wheel. steering. Yeah, for the steering. Um, now, if that is okay, which it probably is, it, it more than likely is that motor. They they go bad, and they just uh, the fact it was working at all, and then it kind of quit. I mean, you know, that motor probably hadn't been cranked and worked for over an hour and a while, and it probably put a little stress on it. And it's just probably time for it to go. Uh, now, I have heard that you can a lot of small engine repair people can take those apart and fix them. I've actually not had much luck with that, although I have tried. Usually, they go in a lot of different pieces. I, I don't know. It's like I never had could quite get them to go back and fit right and everything. So it could be that it the motor... The, that brush is up in there that you can replace. Right. So the, maybe cheap. the motor is able to go one way, but it for some reason can't go back the other, something to that effect. Right. So Which is why we're getting the... Yeah, if the brushes aren't hitting just right and there's rings and stuff in there, then they... It's just not making good contact, so it kind of doesn't know what to do, and it just flips out. And so, uh, and so, you're thinking that just a motor replacement here may be the best way to go. That'd be my my gut guess is that it's the motor. Um, and here's some more information, Tim. Uh, yes, it will calibrate the steering wheel accurately. Okay. Okay, so the steering wheel will calibrate accurately. So on that the rules out the potentiometer. Uh, you know, if your belt, uh, believe it or not, the belt back there, if the belt is slipping or not tight enough, or can't be too tight either, but if it's not tight enough, check your belt. And that's the belt that goes between the steering mechanism and the motor, correct? Mm -hmm. There's a there's a, uh, a pulley on there. Make sure that that's, you know, tight. Take, in other words, uh, your, here's your motor over here, and then there's like a little pulley and a belt that connects them. And make sure that that's not loose, um, that that pulley is not loose. And the way you do that is there's four bolts on the motor, and you can move it and take the belt right off. And then you want to make sure that that is uh, tight on your shaft there. And then uh, you want to make sure that that belt is good and tight. But more than likely, from the description, I think that it's a motor. And they're not cheap, I know that. But um, you can replace, or somebody could replace those uh, little brushes inside and fix those but i've never had much luck with it usually we just of course back in the day they i don't think they were quite as expensive as they are they used to be under a hundred dollars we just replace them and put them on there but I, I know they've went up considerably yeah and let me go ahead and put up the slide here tim so we can get the information from your description kelly it sounds like you have a bad force feedback um, steering motor so with that said it may be worth booting the game into test mode running the diagnostics just to see if there are any other issues and tim i texted tim this question and you told me that mm -hmm. ahead of time otherwise replacing the force feedback motor should solve the problem and tim I actually have some diagrams here of what you're talking about with the motor and that yeah, pulley system there you can see it pretty good right there right so the first one is the diagram from the monitor or from the manual the second one is an actual assembly mm -hmm. uh like we're seeing so you can get a replacement force feedback motor from suzo hat betson or other parts suppliers price looks to be around 200 dollars for the part and tim i linked to the suzo hat feedback motor here which is actually actually lists cruising world as one of the games it works with um you can also get used ones on ebay Tim, and I think you mentioned that as well, and they are a little bit cheaper, but the only thing about the eBay route is you don't necessarily know if it's working, right? Right. So, um, now Nate says that maybe the force feedback board, example, if it's plugged in and forces it to go one side, it could be the same issue, Tim, having the bo uh, board has two, um, 
to OPA uh, 541AP chips. If one goes bad, it'll force itself. Have you had that happen before, Tim? I have had it be a board issue. Um, and so that is that there is a force feedback board. Is, that is correct. So that may be worth checking into before you spend that kind of money. But those, but we just most of the time those motors would just wear out. There's a brush in there. I think you can unscrew it and and put a new brush in there if you're careful. But um, for most of the time, we we were replacing a lot of motors, probably few boards. Uh, and you got to understand that back in the day when we were doing this, we really didn't troubleshoot the boards much. We were interested in getting them back up as quick as possible. So we had some kind of deal where we would just send them our broken one. They'd send us their working one, and we'd be back up the next day or two. Sure. So um, let's see. Oh, Nate says, um, let's see, until it's changed. I changed the pot and steering wheel. Same problem. It was the force feedback board. So, yeah, I mean, you could change the motor and, and, and see. I mean, maybe we're changing the motor, seeing if it works. If it doesn't, you can send the motor back and then work on the force feedback board, right, Tim? Yes. So that may be where it may be a good place to start with yeah, the motor. Yeah, say then, it wasn't the motor. Right, my exactly. Problem? Wasn't your, wasn't the problem, and then you can look at the board from that point on. So, I mean, it's kind. Of, I mean, you're gonna have to start with one of those two parts, uh, parts though, right, Tim? See the mm -hmm. force feedback control board or the for force feedback motor. It's one of the two. Um, start with the motor, try that first, and if it still doesn't work. It's probably a board issue at that point. I can't remember if those chips were socketed or not. It might could switch them and see. Swap but, them and see yeah, if it goes the other way. And see if it pulls hard the other way. That might be a good way to kind of narrow it down. Sounds good. Uh, it says, thank you. I have two electric motor specialty rebuilders nearby. I can check on them with rebuilding as well. So there you go. Well, let us know how it goes. And we want to know if you find somebody who can rebuild them. We want to know about it. So It seems like I was going to throw a bunch in the trash one time and some guy came in and and I gave him, and he fixed them all. Like it was, and it wasn't very expensive because he was just like, well, it's just brushes. Every time I tried to do it, it really wasn't that easy. <laughs> it just didn't seem that easy to me. But he knew had the right tools to pull it apart and stuff. Absolutely. So, well, keep us updated on that and let us know if you end up, Kelly, if you end up rebuilding that or get someone to re rebuild it. And if it fixes the problem, great. If you need help with the board repair, let us know as well because Tim's had a little bit of a uh, little bit of work with that as well. So uh, keep us updated. You can uh, send any updates to questions at arcaderepairtips.com. Okay, Tim. Well, I think it's time for our quick question and answer section of the okay. show. We've got three of them here ready, rapid fire for Tim to fire off at, as we always do at the end of our question outline here. So uh, let's go ahead and put those up and we'll get to them. So the first one's from Billy. Do you have a video about converting monitors to LED slash LCD? Carl, I bought a Retro Simpsons game. I need to remove the control panel. Is it just a latch that needs to be flipped like you did in our video? I need to get the cat. I need to get the cabinet through my door. So he's trying to take off the control panel so he can get it into his house. You know, four-player uh -huh. control right. panels. All of us know trying to get one of those through a regular door is very difficult unless you have the control panel off. So, and then Craig here just watched your video on how to adjust the horizontal width coil on my 4900. What size Allen is on the end of that plastic tool? Mm -hmm. Do you have a direct link to a website where I can buy one? Great video, by the way. Thanks in advance, Craig. So we got Billy. Do we have a video about converting monitors to LC LCD? Carl, who needs to take the control panel off of his Simpsons. And Craig, who needs to uh, adjust his horizontal width coil, but does not want to do it with an Allen wrench, just wants to know the size. So, Tim, let's go ahead and take these one by one. Do we have a video about converting LEDs to LCDs, Tim? No. Actually, we've recorded one. I've just not edited it. We technically have a video that's never been seen before. Not on, not on, not available Tim, yet. Tim, when I pass away, there's going to be a lot of videos. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's going to find my treasure trove of stuff we've recorded and not edited, and hopefully it'll all make it out there. But no, we do not have a video on that, Tim. But, I mean, we talked about it a little bit with the Gomba 6200 uh -huh. uh, con video converter earlier in the show. So, I mean, that's basically all you need in order to put an LCD in there. But, Tim, what do we always recommend that you do? That you use an arcade-style LCD. Uh, made for arcade games one that commercial grade arcade quality lcd what he said that's right that's what you always want to use carl how do i get my simpsons four player cabinet through my door and take off this freaking control panel well he asked could you get up there and yes you can flip the latches but that's just going to take the top up what you're probably going to have to do is take the top up and then unbolt it correct and unplug the wires and take it all the way off it's not hard it takes an extra few minutes, but no, you can't just 
unlatch it and it come off. It, you're going to have to unlatch it, raise the top up, and get in there and unbolt it. Yeah, typically there's four bolts, Tim. There's two into the front of the cabinet and two into the bottom of the cabinet, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to have to take those out. So, uh, Craig, okay, obviously he says what size Allen, Allen wrench. He, he said for the plastic tool. So I think he recognizes that I don't want to use an Allen wrench, but what do I need to use in order to adjust my horizontal width coil? Well, you can get a TV alignment tool kit. I'm not sure exactly which one in there um, it is because it does come with a couple different sizes. But the whole kit is comes with every size that you would need. So uh, I think Bob Roberts still sell that. And uh, but but you look for a TV alignment tool kit. And uh, I'm not sure exactly what the size is. Yeah, I was about to say, and we actually, I didn't do Bob Roberts on here, Tim, although you can probably get them from him as well. I did mm -hmm. Suzo Hap has them yeah. as well as um, Amazon. Amazon, them, I would figure. Yeah. So, and we have a link down below, but I'll go ahead and put up the responses that you have here, Tim. Um, so, no, we don't have a video that we'd recommend going, uh, but we do recommend going with a commercial grade arcade quality LCD that already supports the resolution slash frequency you need. If you do that, you don't have to get a converter board. Right. Okay, that's the key. If you do this, no converter board required, which is great. So, Billy, if you want to do an LCD in your game, commercial grade arcade quality LCD, you can get those from Suzo Hap, TwistedQuarter.com, Arcade Shop, um, who else? Uh, Holland Computers. Basically, any arcade parts supplier will have a commercial grade arcade quality LCD that does does a whole bunch of things a whole lot better than off the shelf. One, it comes on when the game comes on. There's no right. rig and power buttons. Two, it already has the converter built into it, so you don't have to have a separate converter board or he supports the resolution that you need. It's just a whole lot less of a headache. A whole lot less of a headache to do that, so yeah. please do that. Earlier in the show, we talked about the Gombas 8200 and the Tekken 3. If he would have gone this route, he, he wouldn't have had any problems. Yeah. Exactly. Carl, you can reach up through the coin door and find the latches holding down the control panel. There will be one on the right and one on the left just inside the panel. But then, like Tim mentioned, you're going to have to take out the bolts as well. And Tim, I uh, highlighted the latches in red over here on the left-hand side. Okay. And then you can see the bolts going into the back and the bolts going down mm -hmm. slightly in that diagram. So those are going to be the ones you'll need to take out. Plus, you'll have to undo the connectors like Tim mentioned. So if you're going to do that, highly recommend you, uh, you put labels or tape or something on those connectors to let you know which one goes where. Yep. So, uh, Craig, please do not use an Allen wrench. I know Al um, Craig said plastic tool, Tim. Right. So I'm going to give Cra Craig credit, but we do want to remind people, do not use an Allen wrench to adjust the horizontal width coil. Very bad idea. What you want is a TV alignment toolkit, and these can be purchased from Suzo Hap, suzohap.com or Amazon. And Tim, we have a paid link, affiliate link here for Amazon. You can go down in the, in the show notes below and click that link. Or Tim just mentioned the real Bob Roberts.net also has them probably still as well. So TV alignment tools, what you're looking for, Craig, uh, get one from the link below or at uh, any of your favorite arcade parts suppliers. Okay, Tim, did we do it all? I think so. Cool. Okay, I'll go ahead and throw us up, back up here. So uh, let me look at the uh, live show here real quick. Uh, YouTube Punk says, convert to LCD blasphemy. So there you go. Um, let's see, that's not socketed. They're $10 on eBay if you need them. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Don't use a metal Allen. You see, Paul is saying the same thing. We right. do not use a metal Allen wrench to adjust the horizontal width coil. Michael says, I committed blasphemy and converted to an LCD. Guys, uh -huh. look, uh, it's not a, it's, bla it's not blasphemous <laughs> anymore. You no. can't get CRTs unless you want to go digging through junkyards or, <laughs> or garage sales for or weeks at a time. Out. or Spending a lot of money. Or yeah. spending a lot of money. I mean, at this point, LCD is really, I mean, unfortunately, the way to go. I mean, in a lot of cases, Tim, we can fix CRTs. But I'm only going to fix CRTs as long as it's economically viable. Right. Does that sound good? Sounds good. Economically viable. And Tim, you would be surprised the number of people who ask for C LCD over CRT. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we build cabinets, if I gave somebody the option between the two, I would say 80 to 90% of the time, the person's going to say LCD. Right. It is what it is. So, And the main reason? Warranty. You know, on a CRT, a lot of times we won't give a warranty on that because no. we don't have any new ones anymore. On an LCD, you usually get at least a 90-day or one-year warranty. And so people will go that way just to get the warranty. So let's see. Um, but the aspect ratio remains perfect, so I'm good with it. Let's see. Paul says, I can build a monitor with a fresh CRT tube that blows away any LCD LED. And I think he can, Tim. I believe the that's problem right. is finding the tubes. And so uh, mm -hmm. sometimes you can, sometimes you can. If you can, then that's great. But um, it just depends. You can, I mean, if you can find a nice 19-inch TV... You know, and you can build a chassis for it. Great. I mean, right. that's, I mean, you know, it's great. But definitely but a plug for Paul. He does do it at a reasonable price. And if you have an L, uh, I mean, a CRT, and you're not wanting to attempt the repair, I would definitely uh, send it to him. Absolutely. So, 
Uh, yeah, but anyway, so it's not so blasphemous anymore, guys. LCDs, LCDs are a thing that has to happen now, I feel like. And so, here's the thing. Just don't do it bad. Right. Please don't put <laughs> off-the-shelf TVs in there. Don't right. do it. Avoid the converter boards at all costs. Now, there are some times where you, you have to go converter board. Let's say you want a really big monitor in mm -hmm. your, like one that's too, like let's say you want to go with like a 32-inch or bigger LCD in your cabinet, okay? A converter board might be the only way to accomplish that, okay? Right. I understand, okay? But if you're using a standard arcade cabinet, there are LCDs that fit. Like they just fit, Tim. Right. And they work. So just use those. It's great. Okay, back to the live chat. Tim, D6, quick question on Holland Computer's cocktail kit. Does it have a trackball um, control option? I did not see one on their site. I do not believe so. Now, I with that it. said, if you talk, if you called up their support and said you wanted a control panel with a trackball option, they would probably be able to do it for you. Uh, they're very accommodating, Tim, as we mm -hmm. know. So if you, call, if you email their support, their support people are really good, really friendly. I've dealt with them before. Uh, if you email them and just say, hey, um, is there any way I could get the cocktail kit but get a control panel with the trackball option, I think they would be able to accommodate you. So you may contact them. Um, and if they say no, that's okay. I mean, I kind of understand that because it's a little it's a little difficult. Their panel, Tim, is is like a standard yeah. size cocktail panel, which so you're pretty much either going to get a lot of room. I was about to say you're pretty much either going to get either a trackball or a joystick. You're mm -hmm. going to have to sacrifice the the joystick for the trackball more than likely. But if your favorite games are Centipede, Millipede, and all the ones that use the trackball, Tim, I right. totally understand. So, um, uh, like I said, but contact Holland Computers and get with them, and they can give you more information on that. They do make a Y. They do make a two-player side-by-side control panel that goes on the long side of the mm -hmm. cocktail, Tim. And so they may be able to get you one with a trackball in the middle. In that case, yes. So, there we go. Uh, Danny says LCDs use less energy than CRTs anyway. Uh, let's see. Nate says sucks. Gun games have to have CRT unless it's an XY pipe gun game. Yes, I mean that's that that's just one of the things. Um, so if you're going to use any of the optical based gun games, Tim, you still have to have a CRT in there for the most part. Um, there are people have been starting to find some workarounds for that, but I haven't seen any that work consistently. I so, agree. Um, but there are some there are some workarounds that are kind of going for that. So, anyway. Okay, Tim, uh, I'm going to take a break here, even though we don't have one in the outline, because you brought me this nice bag. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I'm going to open this up. So, I think we talked about this last time. Yeah. Uh, my birthday was Monday. Mm -hmm. So, there you go. The big birthday. The big birthday, yes. So, um, we're having a big party on Saturday. Saturday. We're having yeah. a big party on Saturday. Unfortunately, Tim won't be able to make it due to personal things, but um, we're having a, uh, you were invited. I Brother, <laughs> so it's not like I didn't invite him. He did. He did get the invite, but uh, I understand. I understand. But uh, anyway, so we're celebrating today. So I have uh, this goodie bag that Tim gave me. It's in a nice happy birthday bag. Check that out. Mm -hmm. So, okay, Tim, let me see what you got in here. Okay. Oh, what's this? Oh, nice wireless Texas Rangers speaker. So yeah. as I mentioned, I'm a big Texas Rangers fan. First games tomorrow, Tim. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to it. This thing looks really cool. Thank you very much. I just thought that. It, even, even if it just sits on the shelf, it looked cool. It does look cool. <laughs> and but you might could use it your grilling or Absolutely. whatever. So thank you. Do Let's the t-shirt what... next. Oh, the t-shirt next. Okay, hold on on that. Oh, nice. Do you have that one? Um, you know, I have one of them, kind but of I've like almost. It, but it's, uh, it's not different. Quite like it's a that. little different. Okay, so good. I will take it. Thank you very much. Um, one of my favorite games of all time, Super Mario sixty four. Right. Holler at me if you guys agree. It's a great game. Well, that's a tag just in case because I knew you had one <laughs> oh, yeah, similar, yeah. but I said, well, maybe not. Now, this one's interesting. Okay. Remember, we always used to talk about the the click strip uh, gun. Yes. And But we until we found something better, now we never talk about them. And they would always break. They were cheap and yeah. stuff. Well, this is the same company. They finally 2020 their click strip <laughs> <Okay>. gun. <laughs> and so I'm kind of curious as how oh, it works. Oh, very nice. So this is a Quinn pistol grip automatic wire stripper. Right. So very nice. It used to be the red red one. And uh, now this is their latest uh, version. And it costs about the same as the other one. So I'm really interested to see sometime how does, does it really work? Did they right. really improve it by that much maybe if nothing else it looks a little bit more durable i don't think i have just any random wire here yeah, for we'll me to strip. actually i may i may over there I'll have, maybe <laughs> maybe between the um live show and the after show i'll yeah. see if i can find some so if you guys want to stay tuned to it for the after so show, it's just more of a curiosity here. deal when we we started off we used to use those 
because there wasn't a lot of alternatives. Right. And then we got away from them. When I saw this, I looked. I said, Quinn, wait a second. It's the same brand and everything. It's just a newer version of it, so I'm kind of interested to see how that wire stripper works. I'll get some wire in the after show, and we'll try it out. So <laughs> thank right. you, Tim, for You're my welcome. birthday presents. Happy awesome. birthday. Well, thank you. I, I hate that you can't make it to the party. Me too. But uh, that's okay. We'll, we'll uh, have a good time without you. So oh, no, you will. <laughs> <laughs> just be careful. And I totally understand. So uh, personal things, you know, come up and things. So, But thank you for my gifts. You're welcome. I'm very, very appreciative. So, okay. Um, let's see. Um yeah, regular show says 40. Yep, 40. Yep. So, uh-huh. golly. But here's the thing. I've been working on games since I was 19 with Tim. Right. So more, than, more than half my life now, I've been working on arcade games. That's golly, right. it doesn't, it feels, it feels like longer than that. <laughs> Maybe. You Gosh, see, I, if you, I was about to say, if you're working on games, it ages you quickly. That's, that's yeah. the thing about it. It really does. Because, I mean, cl- crawling into the back of cabinets, Tim... It's not for the old guys. It's for the young kids. <laughs> yeah. So, which is why Tim had That's me around. That's why I had you years. around. Exactly. So, you need somebody to crawl in the back of cabinets. So, mm-hmm. but uh, anyway, so uh, happy birthday from YouTube Punk. Thank you, YouTube. Thank you, Danny. Uh, thank you, Nate. Thank you guys for the birthday wishes. It um, means a lot. And yeah, this was the big one. So, for my party, Tim, we have rented out a movie theater to watch mm-hmm. Sonic the Hedgehog 2. That's literally what I'm doing for my 40th mm-hmm. birthday. Isn't that exactly what a 40 year old should do, Tim? Well, sure. So, Especially exactly. one with kids. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, oh, well, you know when all your friends have kids, it's like you got to do is. something where everybody can bring everybody. Exactly. Because, I mean, otherwise, you can't come. It's amazing how those parties change from yeah. your 20s to your 30s <laughs> and then your 40s. Then when you get 50s, you have your grandkids, so you got to go back and have water slides and stuff like that, you know? (laughs) I don't know. By the time I'm 50, I mean I have grandkids yet. We had them a little late there, so it'll be a little bit longer for me. (laughs) But uh, no, I mean, you know, I, you know... How, you know, people always ask me, like, how does it feel? I always say, oh, it feels like yesterday. It feels like I was 39. I, don't know. I mean, right. it's like yeah. I never, I don't know. I mean, I, I try to work out, exercise, take good care of myself, eat right. I mean, it is what it is. But, um, you know, I, I still feel good. Do you uh, still feel good? Uh, I don't know. Some days. Yeah, some, uh, most days. Yeah, I was about to say, some days I feel like an old man. Other I do, days no. I, it's, I, I feel like a weather barometer. Yeah. Because <laughs> I understand. I'm like, oh, my knees. Oh, man, it's going to rain today. Yeah, you know, I feel like that. You can tell those changes in pressure and stuff affect you a little different. Yeah. So, anyway, when we come back on the after show next month, well, I'll be able to tell you about Sonic the Hedgehog, too, because we're all going to yeah. see it. So, um, uh, But we're going to have a good time and looking forward to it. Uh, 40, well, since Tim's not coming, 43 of my closest friends will be there. So, wow. <laughs> so I think it's how many people we've got at the movie theater. So, and like I said, it's all people, it's all, um, people with kids because all of our friends have kids now. So it's all families of like four or three. It'll five. be fun. Yeah, it'll be yeah. fun. Looking forward to it. I like, and I really like the first song. Which Edge theater did y'all get? Um, it's, uh, SMG. SMG. Okay. Yeah. So, but, uh, looking forward to that. So, uh, really looking forward to that. So, uh, oh, Tim says happy big 40. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, anyway. So, Tim, with my birthday out of the way, let us continue on with our outline with some discussion. And, Tim, it was kind of slow until, like, two or three days ago. Right. Yeah. The news was slow, and then all of a sudden it was like... Blew up. Russia invaded Ukraine or something. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so we're going to talk about... So, I put the slow stuff on here, but the big hitters (laughs) we're going to save till the end. Because, I mean, we had one one post that went, like, totally crazy, I mean, for us. Mm -hmm. And so, we'll talk about that here in a second. But this first one here, Tim, was pretty good. Frogger player shatters world record with over a million points. And this is from wow. Kotaku, Tim. On February 27th, software engineer Michael Smith surpassed his own previous world record for Konami's 1981 coin-up classic Frogger, a feat which involved maxing out his game score's counter multiple times. His new score sits at a comfortable 1,356,520, handily topping his previous score of 970,440. Smith's new Frogger score was verified by Twin Galaxies and formally accepted on March 1st. The accomplishment also meant that Smith endured in in the game on one credit, dodging cars and hopping across logs and lily pads for over seven hours. (laughs) Wow. So if you ever feel like you want to be one of those guys who tries to get a high score in a game, you may want to think about which game it is because some of these things are marathons. I would never, I, I'm never going to tempt Frogger now because I'm, I'm horrible at it anyway. Yeah. I could not play that game for seven hours. You got to go to the bathroom at some point. So you yeah. have to kind of get enough lives to where, can okay, I can, I, exactly. I can walk away for a second, go to the restroom and then come right back. So, crazy. Yeah. But I mean, it's just, it, it is crazy. And you know, it's just uh, these high score guys. I mean, you have to have a real devotion to it in most cases. Um, seven hours is actually one of the shorter ones tim i mean some right. of them take days depending on what you what which game you're going for so but we want to congratulate michael smith on the record that's pretty awesome tim uh, i love playing frogger mm-hmm. i've never even probably got past two hundred thousand. Mm-hmm. so i mean just to show you it's a big accomplishment we want to want to congratulate him on doing such an accomplishment awesome stuff 
Okay, Tim, so Atari had a couple of things that came up here, and the first thing was that they acquired the video game database Moby Games for $1.5 million. Okay. So okay. Atari has acquired Moby Games for $1.5 million. Moby Games is a highly regarded and renowned video game database that stores information on the medium spanning back to the 1950s. It's a time cap capsule with thousands upon thousands of resources, including data on just about every single Nintendo release ever, along with releases across a dozen dozens of platforms. Hopefully the database will remain a valuable resource for enthusiasts around the world and Atari keeps its promise of supporting the site and improving the user experience. So there you go. So uh, Atari spending some money here, Tim, for uh, acquiring kind Moby Games. It, it really is, but it kind of makes sense, I guess, in their portfolio, Tim, to have that. The other thing we know is that Atari is celebrating an anniversary, a 50th anniversary, and so they are putting out some shoes with Kariuma. Uh, you can get Atari 50th anniversary uh, new kicks, Tim. The okay. venerated gaming company announced on Thursday that it is collaborating with sustainable footwear company Kariuma. Uh, the collection will feature five designs atop two of the most popular sneaker styles, the Chuck Taylor-esque OCA Low and the Vans adjacent Katiba Pro. The Katiba Pros retail for about 98 and will come in black and white variants, while the $89 OCA Lows will include red color scheme in addition to black and white. Tim, I actually think they look pretty sharp. Yeah. I, I like the red too. ones the best. So, I, like I mean, with the, little, with the little Atari logo on yep. it and everything, it just looks cool. So uh, if you guys are interested in that, you guys can uh, check that out. So uh, Atari's going to be uh, going to be selling those here with Karyoma very soon. So uh, before I go on, Tim, uh, there's a couple of things in the live chat here. YouTube Punk says, "What about that Nibbler movie, Man vs. Snake?" And I totally forgot. It's been a while since I've seen that, so I can't remember mm -hmm. how long it took to get the to get the high score in Nibbler. But, oh, um, crazy! Yeah, mm -hmm. Michael says the only game I truly ever mastered was Shinobi. I beat it with one man a few times. That's good. Arcade Obsessed says, hey guys, keep up the great work. Thank you, Arcade Obsessed. Thank you for being here tonight as well for the live show. YouTube Punk says, somebody better download an offline copy of that Moby database. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and with Atari, you just never know. Right. Um, so, um, you know, it could be that they take it offline. I think people are hoping that's going to continue to operate as, as it has. But, um, you know, who knows? So... Okay, Tim, let's get to a couple of the newer news items for this month. And, Tim, this was a big one. Um, Pinball FX, a lot of you guys play Pinball FX. It's a nice app for playing pinball on your phone, Tim. Mm -hmm. So um, this this was an article from Polygon here. Why Pinball FX is making you rebuy your old tables. And right there, Tim, that probably sets a couple of red flags up right. in your mind. Um, so let's go ahead and read this. The maker of Pinball FX says... Uh, the switch to an in-game currency slash all-you-can-eat subscription model will help it accommodate cross-platform buys later, but long-time players will have to rebuy tables in the rebooted pinball FX that they may have owned and played for years in other versions. The news has rankled many fans who are not only upset that they will have to rebuy tables, but also at the cost of the in-game cur currency, so $10 for 100 tickets, and subscription price, which is $15 per month. Now, Tim, $15 per month is a lot. Yeah. I mean, $15 dollars per month is more than like netflix you can get the lowest subscription on netflix for less than that so i mean i think the pricing here is high but rebuying tables too i feel like it's just something that leaves a bad taste as a consumer in my mouth yeah um, i think what they should have done is gone to like an upgrade saying okay if you've already purchased this mm -hmm. we'll let you purchase it in the new platform for like an upgrade fee right. which is not the same as buying it if you have to buy it straight up um, but I don't like the fact that they're making you rebuy tables. And Tim, I don't, I, I don't play Pinball FX, but I play the Williams Pinball app on my phone, which mm -hmm. is made by um, the same people. Mm -hmm. So, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it just seems like this is just a bad overall feeling for consumers. Fifteen dollars per month for the Pinball Pass too seems like a lot. What do you think, Tim? Uh, that seems like pretty. Yeah, this seems overpriced. Yeah, it just seems like a lot of money, and I mean, and it, it's kind of it, it's kind of saying to the loyal people who have been playing their game all this time, like we don't care. It, it's almost like beneficial if you haven't been playing Pinball FX all this time, right? Right. So because then you wouldn't be out any money, and you'd be buying these tables all over again, and be no big deal. But mm -hmm. since you're coming from the platform, basically, it's like we're going to scrap everything, take it down to square one. And you're going to have to rebuy everything you already have. Right. And that just doesn't seem fair to people who have invested in your platform. I understand that Pinball FX has been around for a long time, but it just, again, from a consumer standpoint, just seems like a terrible decision. Tim, right. any other takes on it before we move on? Yeah, bad, bad, bad business. Uh, you wouldn't get away with that in Texas very often. <laughs> That's you know, true. Just, I, I just can't think of um, you know, anything that you buy a subscription for. It just says, uh, okay, you bought all these movies and we charged you so much. 
Uh, but now we're going to go to a new platform and all those movies you're going to have to rebuy again. Exactly. That's kind of what I was thinking yeah. of kind of comparing it to. You know, there are movies that I like that I bought and they're on my system. I can watch them anytime, even if I can discontinue the service, I own them. Um, so that, that's, yeah, it just doesn't seem like good business practice. But it's also, Tim, just goes to show you that um, in the digital world that we live in, you don't own anything. Right. That's you know true. what I'm saying? I mean, even though these people paid for the rights to play these games, that right's about to be taken away because they don't physically own those games. True. You know, it's not like when you physically own an arcade cabinet or a pinball machine and it's like, look, it, it's going to play, it's it'll work forever because it's designed like that as long as I take good care of it and keep it up, right? I agree. So, but in the digital world, it can be taken away. Yep. So Obviously. something to think about. But anyway. So, now, Tim, this is the story that blew up on right. our Facebook page. Golly, it had just a ton of views, a ton of shares. And I think it was, I don't think it was because um, because of the news itself. I think it's because we were the first ones to really report it. Okay. Uh, we kind of hit it right when it came out. And the reason why, Tim, is because I'm an investor in Dave & Buster's. Right. <laughs> so, I kind of, I get this news, like, right off the bat. I like to see what I'm, you know, see what's going on. So, Tim, here it is right here. Main event to be acquired by Dave & Buster's for $835 million. Mm-hmm. So this was this article was not the one we originally posted on our social media pages. This one was from uh, Yahoo Finance, Tim, okay. which I know you've you've read a lot. I've read a lot too. Dave and Buster's has bought Main Event in an eight hundred and thirty five million dollar deal. Once the deal is closed, Main Event chief executive Chris Morris will become CEO of Dave and Buster's, taking over from Kevin Sheehan, which was he was an interim CEO. Tim, uh, they lost theirs. Um, oh, I forget. I, I think through the whole COVID mess, mm. and so he was just acting as interim CEO. So, okay. so Chris will take over the helm for Dave and Buster's and basically operate both companies. Main Event is one of the fastest growing family entertainment brands in the country with 50 operating locations nationwide. So, Tim, if you do the math, they have 50 locations, $835 million. That's $16.7 million per location. Wow. So, if you're Main Event, you'd be kind of stupid not to take this deal. Right. Just based on that. So, under the deal, Main Event will continue to operate as a distinct brand. Now, Tim, I've seen some some things about how Main Event and Dave Busters are kind of competition, mm-hmm. um, but... It really seems like main event is probably more targeted towards younger kids, while right. Dave Investors is probably more for that uh, young adult, teenager, mm-hmm. college student, and older crowd like us. I agree. Dave Investors is probably more targeted towards us. I'd be more likely to walk into a Dave Investors before a main event. Probably so. So, um, so let's talk about uh, let's talk about Chris Morris for a second here, Tim. Over Morris's four-year tenure, main event has expanded its center footprint by over thirty percent and more than doubled. There are earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortization. Wow. Okay. So this seems like a win for Dave & Buster's too because now they're getting a guy who obviously has a lot of experience. Now, Tim, you may recognize the name Chris Morris because he used to use, work for another company that you used to work for, Chuck E. Cheese Entertainment. He was the CFO. I know Chris. You know Chris? Yeah. I need him on the show. So I was can like... <laughs> I need him on the show. I did so can not you realize. Yeah, him? I haven't seen this article. I did not realize that he was going to be the CEO. Correct. So he was CFO for uh, for CEC Entertainment for ten years, a long time. Right. I can't remember how long, but for a very long time. And so um, he is now going to be the. And so, like you know, he came over to main event. Tim, he already had experience in the entertainment business, right? He right. already worked for Chuck E. Cheese. He already had an idea of how things were going. So, um, so if you know Chris, it'd be great if you could talk to him. I was going to see if his phone number was still on my phone, but it's not. Okay, yeah. because um, he he would be a great guy to talk to right now. I'm very interested about how the deal all mm-hmm. happened and and kind of what his vision is for Dave and Buster's moving forward. Um, but I really think this is a win for Dave and Buster's because they get him, mm-hmm. and he's done really good financially. And it's a win for Main Event because they're getting a buttload of money. <laughs> is that right. I mean? so. <laughs> it, 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 it really is. And um, what's weird is they only have 50 locations and literally Dave and Buster's could have bought Chuck E. Cheese and 600 locations for a little bit more than that two years ago. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's true. They've been for sale forever. They still could. Right. So it's weird that that is, I think that Chuck E. a good deal. Right. If you could, but the thing is, is Chucky, Chucky care, has but... been losing money, right? Right. Whereas Main Event has been making, incre- money. making money. Exactly. Yeah. It's the difference. And so, I mean, this, so basically, Dave and Buster's is taking on more debt. They already have debt, but they're taking mm-hmm. on more debt 
So in the short term, this is probably going to hurt Dave and Buster's a right. little bit. Okay, but in the long term, if Chris Morris is able to do what he did with Main Event Tim, uh, Dave and Buster's could become a company and may look at an acquisition like Chuck E. Cheese, perhaps. Correct? Right. Maybe so. So maybe this is part of a larger expansion plan. You and, know, uh, we audit that main event. I didn't know that. Yeah, and okay. we used to audit Dave and Buster's. Wow. So it's going to be curious now. What we do that Chris has taken over. Well, we do Dave and Buster's and main event. Sure. So maybe some more business for me. There you go. <laughs> well, that's good. Well, if you can get in and touch so with fun. I was about to say, if you can get in touch I, with Chris, I get to do all the game testing. Yeah, I was about to say, you need to get in touch with Chris. We need to get an interview. Okay. So we'll if work you can, on because it. I think I think it's fascinating. His kind of, I mean, the fact that you guys both work for Chuck E. Cheese for a yeah. while, and then of course he's gone on in the entertainment business to do these things. So I really do think he's a, he's a, seems like a fascinating guy. So if we can mm -hmm. have him on the show. I'm all about it. All right. Or you do a phone interview. We'll work up something. Chris, if you're watching, don't forget your boy. He ain't watching. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you never know these okay, days. Okay, I, I will say that. We <laughs> never know. But, uh, yeah, I mean, questions at ArcadeRepairTips.com. So, <laughs> if, you wanna, if you want to chime in, we definitely would like to hear from you. So, But I do think it's a win-win on both sides. I think it's part of a longer-term strategy, though. Mm -hmm. And the thing about public, public, about public companies... Publicly traded companies like Dave and Buster's is kind of you're kind of forced into this position of continual growth, and this has to do with that as well, Tim. Mm -hmm. Like they're trying to grow, and so main event, you know, of course, absorbing those fifty locations is going to help them out quite a bit. But I tend to think, Tim, that this is part of a a longer term strategy. So, right. And hopefully, Chris with Chris at the helm, both companies will flourish a lot, and uh, it'll become overall. What do you think about their premise that main event targets younger kids while Dave and Buster's targets older? Do you agree think, with that? Yeah, I think that it's good to keep them separate because if you've ever been, um, that's exactly what you'll see. You'll go into a main. Let's say Friday night. Let's say for your birthday, we want, or Saturday night, we want to go out. We would go to Dave and Buster's. We would see guys our age, a little younger be some drinking and um, lots of game playing, but it would cater to that. You'd see a lot of guys more than girls. Right. <laughs> it would be guys hang out at night and, and some women and stuff, but it would mostly be adults. You turn around and went right up the street to main event, you would see families with their kids. Yeah. And uh, it's more than Chuck E. Cheese. It wouldn't be just kitty games. They have a lot of adult games, and they have uh, food and a bar and everything. But it, it definitely, I can see the difference when I go there. So main event, food-wise, usually has more of like a concession stand style food. Like maybe some nachos, some hot dogs, stuff they've, like that. They've actually expanded quite a bit, but not quite the menu, I think. that Even David, Dave and Butcher's has went smaller. Right. And they've went a little bigger. So it's not going to be a lot of difference. They're, they serve uh, wings and stuff like that. and Okay. Maybe even a little bit more food than uh, Dave and Buster's now at this time. Uh, I YouTube, have to ask CEO. I can't, I've YouTube Punk says those main events sell alcohol. I'm pretty sure they do. Yes. Yeah, they sell alcohol. But I don't know if they have a bar, like a big nice bar like Dave and Buster's would have. It's more like, yeah, it's more like you could have a drink or they have a bar area. I know they do. They have a bar you can sit at. But for the most part, it's tables, you right. know, where they serve you a drink at your table. Sounds good. Uh, so, I mean, I think it's going to be interesting. We'll see what happens going forward. My stock jumped a lot, like, the day before the announcement. I think yeah, some people were getting coming, in early. Yeah. Um, and it's fallen a little bit since then. And it may fall some more. But I think in the long term, Tim, it is going to be a win for everybody. I think so. There you go. Uh, before we move on here, Tim, uh, Delusional's Arcade is here. He says, what's up, Tim and Jonathan? What's up, Delusional? How you doing, man? Hope everything's going going your way. Michael said, we had a Stars and, uh, a Stars and Strikes open near us recently. I was super impressed with that place. I have seen those, Tim, but mm -hmm. I have not been in one. Have you ever been I've to been Stars and one, Strikes? Okay. And it was really neat. Yeah, it was a good experience. I liked it. Yeah. It, movie theater, right? Mm -hmm. That's the Stars, and then the Strikes is the mm -hmm. bowling alley part, right? If I remember correctly. It's kind of like in a Grand arcade. Slam. Yeah, Grand Slam. Okay. So, cool places. We love family entertainment centers. Sure. So, love arcade games. Anywhere that has arcade games, right? Mm-hmm. Now, Tim, the good news this month is that I don't have to talk about somebody who passed away. Okay, I feel like I've goodness. done that for like the last five or six months. Right. <laughs> okay, but I do have something that I want to share with you guys about Barry Ausler, who mm -hmm. we talked about uh, last month who had passed away, Tim. Um, they set up a GoFundMe for his family, Tim, so, um, you know, to help out with medical bills and expenses. So we would encourage you to consider making a donation to help them out. 
Barry lost his income and health insurance in 2021, Tim, while battling cancer. Mm. And that's rough right there. If you lose your health insurance while you're battling cancer, it just makes the bills pile up. So medical bills along with monthly bills quickly escalated past that point. His passing has been devastating to everyone, especially his wife and daughter who have been left with an overwhelming amount of debt as they grieve the loss of her husband and, and father. So, I mean, and their father. So, I mean, it's just a... It's a rough situation here, Tim, um, and we want to wish his family the best. But, guys, if you have any, like, just, you know, if you can spare five, ten bucks, just something small to help them out, we would we would encourage you to do that. The link is down below in the show description. You guys can see it there. Um, but, you know, Barry, I, I mentioned this last month, Tim. I got to meet him. He's a very nice guy. I'm a huge fan of a lot of his games, including Who Done It, which we talked about. Mm-hmm. Um, he was very quiet, very right. reserved, but very nice and was willing to a- answer any question that I asked him. And so I, I appreciated that of him. And, uh, we, you know, we just want to help out his family here, Tim, because it does sound like they're still going through a hard time. Mm-hmm. Cancer, guys, it, I mean, it gets you both ways. It gets you it gets you health-wise, but it gets you financially, too. And so, mm-hmm. um, you know, if there's anything you guys can spare to help them out, we, we would encourage you to do that. It's just... Uh, again, um, they're, it sounds like they're really struggling, Tim. Mm-hmm. So there we go. Okay, well, before we wrap it up, Tim, let's go ahead and go to the live chat one more time. We've got NTR President. I wonder if DMB will get into the into bowling game. Some main events have lanes. So some Dave & Busters have lanes. We've been to ones mm-hmm. that have bowling lanes. So, I mean, they have gotten into the bowling game. I mean, uh, Tim, we, was it the one in Houston that had the upstairs with the bowling lanes? Yes. There was one that we went to that had an upstairs of bowling lanes. So it's not mm-hmm. uncommon for them to have bowling. Not all locations have it, Tim. We like the Frisco location. I don't mm-hmm. believe it has bowling. But... Some of the Dave & Buster's locations do have bowling already. Um, Let's see. Uh, But it seems like all the main events do. Yes, it does seem like I think I see what he's saying. It's kind of like their deal to bowling with games and stuff. Absolutely. So... Okay, well, I think I'm going to leave it there, Tim. I do want to go ahead and show this slide because, Tim, we actually paid it off this week or this month. Uh, we uh-huh. had um, an arcade-related video submitted by The Regzer Show. We got to show that in the pre-show countdown. So we will be showing videos now uh, from time to time in the pre-show countdown, and so we were able to show Regzer Shows today to give him some promotion. And if you would like that same kind of promotion for your channel, we're looking for people to submit short videos, 10 minutes or less, about arcade-related topics. You can send a link of your video to questions at arcaderepairtips.com, and our staff will review it. If we like it, we'll use it during one of our live show episodes. Make sure you put a plug in for your channel so people will know where to find you. We look forward to seeing your submissions. And Tim, like I said, we paid that off for the Regzer Show this month. We can pay that off next month for somebody else so yeah. um I, again uh, something uh something to keep in mind for you guys who want to you know try to get monetized on your channel we hope that all of you guys can and uh, we're here to help you out if you've got arcade related content and then, Tim, we have our contact information. We have our general email at questions at arcaderepairtips.com, questions at arcaderepairtips.com. If you put live show in the subject, um, we tend to use those on the show. So if you want it on the show, make sure you put live show in the subject line. Again, that email is questions at arcaderepairtips.com, questions at arcaderepairtips.com. We have our YouTube page at youtube.arcaderepairtips.com. For those of you guys who are in the live chat, you obviously know that we have a YouTube page, but uh, if you're listening to this on the podcast feed, you may not. And so if you want to get the after show, which is a YouTube exclusive, then you'll want to go to youtube.arcaderepairtips.com and look up this episode and fast forward it to the end where we do the after show. So um, the after show, Tim, for those of you guys who don't know, it's just a small little show that we do after the live show where basically any topic goes. We don't restrict it just to arcade topics. So if you you want to stay tuned for that you can we're going to start that about five to ten minutes after the regular live show here on youtube but if you're listening to this again on the podcast feed make sure you make sure you go to youtube.arcaderepairtips.com look up the episode to listen to the after show and tim i think in the after show we're going to try our new stripper out that you got me for my birthday okay <laughs> so there's a teaser you guys can stay tuned for the after show for that oh no so, to our wives where it's a Wire, wire stripper. stripper. Okay. That's right. our new wire stripper okay. tim sorry I, I i'm sorry i have to be very distinct and, of course, you can also subscribe to the audio of this show on our podcast feeds. And that's at, uh, we have a couple of them, Tim, our iTunes one at iTunes.ArcadeRepairTips.com, iTunes.ArcadeRepairTips.com. If you enjoy our content, we would also encourage you to leave a review there. Um, we always like those reviews, Tim. And if you uh, have some way we can improve our show, feel free to email us as well. We are always open for that. 
Um, we're also on Spotify, Tim, at spotify.arcaderepairtips.com, spotify.arcaderepairtips.com. We are also on Stitcher Radio, stitcher.arcaderepairtips.com, or wherever fine podcasts are aggregated. If you do a search for Arcade Repair on any podcast platform, you will probably find our show. So again, uh, look those up, subscribe, and leave us a review on iTunes if you are so inclined. And then, Tim, we have our social media pages. We have our Facebook page at facebook.arcaderepairtips.com, facebook.arcaderepairtips.com. We want to thank Mark for all of his contributions, especially for the the, um, the Texas Pinball Festival contributions, Tim. He went, and uh, Tim, we were not able to go. We didn't talk about that. I was sick uh, the week before, and I did not get to feeling good till Thursday, and I didn't think it would be a really smart idea for me to go up to up to uh, um Frisco on Friday and Saturday after just recovering. Right. So I was not feeling good, and then you had uh, death in the family. Yes. And so, um, which is why you can't come to my party on Saturday, too. Right. So um, we were not able to make it to Texas Pinball Festival, but Mark was. And we want to thank Mark for posting all the, the latest pinball news and all the information there on our Facebook page at facebook.arcaderepairtips.com. If you don't use Facebook, you're a Twitter guy instead. You can also subscribe, or you can also follow us on Twitter at twitter.arcaderepairtips.com. And the same information gets posted on both social media platforms. Again, twitter.arcaderepairtips.com or facebook.arcaderepairtips.com to follow us on social media. Tim, we mentioned that the Dave and Buster's article, it didn't go viral per se, but it definitely got us a ton of views on our Facebook page. Yeah, um, a lot of new likes. Mm. Right, exactly. We got a lot, of, a lot of traction from that. So we want to thank all you guys who may be coming on board for the first time to watch our content uh, because of that article. Uh, we got a lot of shares on that, a lot of great, inf- a lot of great exposure thanks to that. And Tim, like I said, I don't think it was that we were the first to report it. We were just one of the first to put the news out there. So, right. Um, but uh, anyway, we want to thank all you guys who are new to the platform for joining us, and uh, we look forward to you enjoying more of our content in the future. So Tim, after show, wire stripper. All right. Wire stripper, but we're also going to talk about spring break. Okay. Okay, a little bit. What you did, what I did. It is MLB opening day. Right. Like we talked about at the beginning, didn't think that was going to happen, but it is. So we'll talk a little bit about that. NHL, NBA playoffs, March Madness, Tim. What would you think about that? It was a quite an interesting finish to that. that there was you go. A, I liked it. So we'll talk about that. Watch some games. Uh, we'll talk about the movies we've seen. Tim, I did get to see Spider-Man No Way Home. Okay, finally. So finally. So I got to see it. So I'll give you my thoughts on that. Um, a couple of the other shows we're watching, Tim. Uh, you mentioned Stitchers on Hulu, which uh-huh. I haven't seen. Um, I've been watching Winning Time, The Rise of the Lakers Dynasty that on HBO really Max. I'll give you my thoughts on that good. in the after show. So, and Tim, again, after show comes up right after this show, and we'll go forward there. So, if you guys want to wait for the after show, we'll be back in about five or ten minutes after we wrap this up. If you're listening to this on the audio podcast again, make sure you go to our YouTube page, look up the episode, and then go to the end to watch the after show. Tim, I think we're done for this month. As far as the regular show is concerned, is there anything you want to say? Comments or thoughts or pontifications? Mm -hmm. um... Thank everybody for uh, being so lively in the chat room. It looked like you guys were over there. We're real engaged. Um, Sorry we don't have a moderator right now. So anyway, we just want to appreciate you for being here and for making this an active show. We enjoy uh, doing this once a month and so look forward to next month. Absolutely. Thank you guys for being here. Round of applause for the live chat tonight. You guys did great. Uh, Lots of great questions tonight. Tim, comments and input and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Tim, you guys make the show because, I mean, I feel like whenever we don't uh, have the live chat or when it's not as busy, Tim, it kind of makes the show fly by a little bit faster. And I I like it when it's slow and we can kind of take it and answer all the questions and just interact with you guys. I feel like it's way more fun when we get get to interact directly with you guys here on the show. So thank you guys for being here who were live. And thank you if you're watching it after the fact, too. I mean, obviously, we love for you guys to be here live, but we understand that not everybody can do that. And that's why we have a nice archive, Tim, of all of our live shows on our YouTube page. You can always go back and catch those great moments you missed. Well, Tim, I think we're done. All right. Are we done? Okay, so stay tuned for the after show. That'll be coming up here in a minute. Wire strippers. We'll try that mm-hmm. and see where we end up. But otherwise, if you're getting off here, if this is your off-ramp, we hope that you have a great rest of April. We'll be back in May with our next live show. First Thursday night of every month, 5.30. Central time, right, Tim? Yeah. So we hope to see you then, or we hope to see you in the after show, depending. But either way, Tim, got to remember when you're here at Arcade Repair Tips, when you fix the game. You play the game. Take care, everybody, and we'll see you later. Have a great night.
you for watching this episode of the Arcade Repair Tips live show. All of our past episodes are available on our website at ArcadeRepairTips.com or on our YouTube page. This show is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only. Please consult a professional before attempting to repair any coin-operated machines yourself. The preceding program is a Varcade Entertainment production.
and we're back. Welcome back to the after show for episode 62, April 2022 of the live show, Tim. Right. Um, I like, while we were gone, I liked uh, Omega Mark's comment. He says, I'm here for the stripper. Okay. He, okay. He's so, sticking around for that one. Huh? Exactly. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now, Tim, um, let's show everybody what we have. This okay. is some um, old 1980s wiring. I'll show this one. This one really looks. There you go. You old never... 1980s wiring. Yeah, you never see this the pinstriped ones much anymore like right. that. So um, first, Tim, before we start with the other one, let's compare it to what we call the gold standard. So this is an Irwin Vice Grip Stripper, Tim, right. which is our recommended wire stripper. If you guys have seen our posts on Facebook, this is the guy that we recommend again. There's a reason why, right, Tim? Right. This thing is the gold standard. So, Tim, let us do the Irwin Vice Grip first. Okay, so you put it in, you just click it, and it strips... Oh right out and just peel it off so there we go so that is the gold go standard along. that's what we're looking for right there out of our new click strip so these are the quins that i opened up during the live show now you can you can see the end of it there kind of how it's configured um and it looks i mean it has metal in here tim i noticed yes and it has a little stop in there so you can only put the wire in so far right okay so let us do the quins so I want to, I've already seen what the major difference is going to be. This is going to work just fine. So you just click it, and there it's stripped. And I actually like that it doesn't let you do too too deep. Right. But if you want to do more, you would have to, it would be a little challenging. Sometimes you need a little bit more. Okay, so in your professional opinion, how does the Quinn click strip hold up to the Irwin Vice Grip Gold Standard strippers? Um, very good. It'll work just fine, except for there's one thing this one will do that this one won't. Uh, let's say that uh, I can come out here in the middle and strip the middle instead of the end. Right. And then I could wrap that around a post or something and like for a ground. Sure. That works really good. Right. This one would not be able to get in the middle like that. Yeah. You don't Not, have that. You don't have that capability. Don't have that capability, which that one does. But overall, uh, I just thought it was kind of interesting to see them uh, kind of making a comeback. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I think, we and I think that years. these may be a little bit quicker than the Irwin Vice Grips. The, the Vice, the Irwin Vice Grip, you kind of have to get them right in that little section there in order for it to work. Right. But this, you can just kind of, you can kind of click it really easily, and it kind of, it has like little angles in there that it kind of, that kind of guide the wire into the stripping mechanism. Yeah, we just opened cool. it, so we've never really played with it. It right. might be, it looks like it's adjustable of some sort. I don't know what that does. We'll find out. <laughs> you may be able to move it back, it looks like, right? Yeah. Tina? So it, it looks like you may be able to move it like um, yeah. back and forward. So you may be able to get it to give you a little bit more wire if you wanted to. Oh, it does, yeah. So it looks yeah. like right now we have it all the way back. We'd actually have to move it forward if, and we could get less, but that's like all the way back. That's as far back as you could get it okay. with the longer amount. So you can actually set it to where you want it to strip the same length every time. You could actually that, set I that. I think that would be, because it's hard to I do think. that every time with that, to right. get it 100%. Now, the um, other thing I like about the Irwin Vice Grips... Oh, and this one has a cutter on it, too. You see, and the Irwin Vice Grips do, too. So you can actually cut the wire off the end, which is very handy, because I like to cut and strip. Yeah. So you can do the same thing here, so you can kind of do this. It does seem faster to me than the Irwin Vice Grips. Yeah. Um, you know, just as far as the click goes. But it doesn't have the flexibility like we're talking about. So, again, the Irwin Vice Grips have a cutter right here, and so I can come in here and I can cut this off if I do that. Oh, get it in there. There we go. So I have a brand new wire. And you also have the... Hard to do it backwards. The things down there for uh, like pinching. Correct. Yeah, for... Um, uh, butt connectors. Yeah, exactly. So you can do like this and you can see strips it right there. So, I mean, overall, I don't know if I'm going to give up these, but I do like having alternatives and these will these may go in my normal but for, box. But for sure, if you're using the uh, wire strippers that kind of look like a pair of pliers with all the little notches, yeah. you're, you really try these. The, yes. Either one of these would beat those by far. Agreed. And, you know, those notch ones are okay sometimes, but the problem is you have to find the right notch. And with the these, they <laughs> size to whatever size the wire is. Uh -huh. Both these do. So it doesn't matter. You don't have to get it in the right notch. Um, and, Tim, I still keep around my classic pull strippers where that just has the holes and I do mm -hmm. it and I pull. Just because sometimes those are just the most convenient depending on what you're doing so i mean so sometimes you know you go you could use these sometimes right. you could use the pulls overall I, it's hard to beat these guys so these guys are really good so well it's 
if if we uh, were still doing the podcast, you'd have a clip to say when I say you can't have too many strippers. That's that's right, exactly. Different kinds, different need variety. Kind. <laughs> exactly. You definitely need some variety. Out there. Variety is is the spice of life. Tim. Right. It is. So, but anyway, so if, tell if, us what what do you guys use? Do you have a preference? I, I mean, you do a lot of wire stripping like us. It really does. Um, you know, come in handy. Absolutely. I was going to say, and if you don't have nippy cutters, like yes. these guys, get you some. These are like so great. I know like these things have cutters on them, but there's nothing like cutting with these. My wife uses them now because like when she zip ties something and yeah. then she, when she wants to get the zip tie off, she'll cut them and she'll be like, can you order a couple pair of those? And I'm like, why? She goes, because every time I want to find them, you got them a different place. We'll put two or three and we use them all the time. Even my wife uses them for crafts and stuff like that. Absolutely. Nippy cutters. Nippy cutters you need them. So yeah, if you guys have different uh, different type of wire stripper that you guys use, let us know. Um, big fan of the Irwin Vice Grip strippers though. I mean, they they have like I said, they are the gold standard to me. I haven't found anything that works much better. And look, they're working on this old 1980s wiring. Some strippers, mm -hmm. the old click strippers, used to it would pull the wire out with yeah. the with the cover. Right. So like, I think I have them over there. Hang on. <laughs> what? This is the after show. I can move. <laughs> okay. So here's. Here's right. all of them. <laughs> munch Munch right here. That, that's the 2010 version. Yeah. The 2000 version is just red. So this one has the, yeah, exactly. This one has the cutter on it. So it does have a cutter. I don't like this cutter very much. And these are cheap, guys. So Yeah. yeah in fact, that cutter's not even cutting very well. I keep these in my toolbox like when I go places. The stripping mechanism still works pretty well. This is where we're going to get the nippy cutters in here. There we go. So, I mean, these things are fast, okay? But I think the new version is a little bit better. But you can see here, like, I, I still have problems kind of getting it. And sometimes... Um, sometimes the wire will pull in with it, yeah. like so it It'll won't strip actually strip half it. The wires out. Right, exactly. So I mean, you, these these guys are very cheap. You can get these a lot of times at like dollar stores even mm -hmm. now. But um, this is kind of like the old version of what Tim just gave me, the yeah. Quinn one. So, but there you go. Um, Delusional says vice grip yellow and blue are the best. Period. That's what yeah. Delusional <laughs> says, and we believe you're right. Yeah. And this is why we keep this right here. So. This is the guy, and they go on sale. And Tim, when they go on sale, we tend to post them. Mm -hmm. So if you guys do not have the yellow and blue vice grip, uh, let us know. And like I said, we'll next time they go on sale, we'll post them for you guys to buy. Um, but this Quinn is not bad at all. And to be honest with you, I'm fairly impressed with it. So um, I don't know how much it costs compared to the the Irwin it's vice almost, grips. Um, I'll, I'll, well, you know, you don't care. Right. I, I think yeah, this, I this those are probably about three dollars. You know, this right. these I think this one was uh 16 or 17 Not bad. and this is usually what i don't know what these are running now 20 uh, 20 25 20 sometimes 25. 30 it depends on the day yeah <laughs> <laughs> so but yeah i mean these though um they have not pulled the wire out at all anytime we've used them it does have a gauge setting which i do like uh -huh. on there so you can kind of set the gauge for how long you want to strip so if you want to strip a whole bunch of wires the same the same amount like let's say you only wanted like mm -hmm. you know um 12 centimeters off each one or whatever you could strip them all right you real want quick them real the same quick length. Right, all exactly. the same length so that i mean there are some handy things about it uh i'm not i, I still have my own vice but um but you know Good stuff still. Thank you, Tim. You're welcome. I think it was good. It was a good, uh, good gift and a good little. Uh, we had that, we had a nice little test with it <laughs> right. too. So, and like I said, if it works on 1980s wiring and doesn't pull it out, yeah, that's what we need right there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. This is what we need right here because this wiring is as brittle as brittle gets right here. Right. Okay. So <laughs> this is. I think this is from a Gallagher cabinet. <laughs> okay. So, there you go. But anyway, okay, so let's get into the actual after show, Tim, after doing our stripper review. Okay. Um, so how did your March go? How would spring break go? Everything okay? Uh, my son came home from the military, so he was here. Um, mostly I worked, um, but it was interesting. This is the first job I could have taken off. Uh -huh. I didn't really have a lot of time built up. I probably will next year. Um, you know, it was weird being on this side. Right. Uh, uh, for those of you who know my history and everywhere I've always worked, spring break's always been the busiest week of the year. Could never take off. And I went into some places. They were really busy when I was working. Uh, but it was a kind of a chill week for me. Not too bad at all. How about you? Did y'all go anywhere or do anything? So I was sick before spring uh, break. Um, like the Sunday and Monday before, I wasn't feeling good. And then... Tuesday, I went back to work, and then Wednesday, my son started feeling not good, and they mm -hmm. were home for spring break, mm -hmm. so I had to stay home with them Wednesday and Thursday, and then Friday, I went to work, and Saturday, we went to Dallas. 
uh, for my wife's birthday, um, and I took the kids to a huge mall up in the Dallas area, mm. and people were everywhere. It was packed. It was the busiest place I've been since COVID. And I don't think I ever really recovered from my original sickness. Mm-hmm. And so, like, Sunday night, we came home Sunday, and Sunday night, I started running a fever Good, again. And yeah, I was wow. down I was down for three and a half days. Wow. So, um, and Not that's fine. why I couldn't make it to the Texas Pinball Festival. I really wanted to, but I was in no condition to, to do that. And I'm just now starting to kind of recover. So, I mean, like, feeling 100%. So, um, you know, it was, a, it was kind of a rough March. A yeah. lot of stuff went on. And I'm kind of glad that it's April and kind of over with. And it's still busy. I, we're always busy around here. Seems that way. I, I told Tim I have been building... <laughs> Easter egg um, launchers. Easter egg air gun launchers. Basically out of leaf blowers and PVC pipe. And so um, we're doing an Easter egg hunt at our church. And we're going to shoot Easter eggs out of out of these launchers. We're going to have four of them. So, um, hey, easy way to hide Easter eggs. Yeah. And, you know, that's what we call an egg explosion, Tim. Okay. So there you go. So I'm taking these are plastic eggs you're shooting. Yes. Okay. <laughs> plastic, but although it would work with real hard-boiled eggs too, Tim, and that may be an idea for later. Yeah. So anyway. Maybe a good video. I don't know. Make sure and film this. This could go wrong or could go right. Well, we tested it with Easter way. candy-filled eggs, and I'm I'm shooting like uh, about 10 a second. So, wow. So, um, you know, bop, 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 You know, so, I mean, I can fill a yard in no time. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. Hey, if you got hundreds of kids that you want, that want to, you know, find Easter eggs, Tim, you got to get the eggs out there. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. So, that has been my project over the last week, which is fun. So, um, yeah, Eggzooka. I like an Eggzooka <laughs> from YouTube Punk. I like that. Yes, Eggzookas. I've got three, uh, four of them we're going to have here. So, yeah, hey, you know, we're going hey, we're going to celebrate Easter the only way I know how, Tim, with an explosion. So, <laughs> but um, anyway, it's going to be fun. Hopefully, we're going to be doing that. But spring break was good, except for being sick. So, right. and I'm finally feeling better, which is good. But, um, you know, it, my, my uh, wife's birthday is in March, so we kind of celebrated that. We went to a show. We went to go see mm-hmm. um, Come From Away. Tim, have you heard of the musical Come From Away? Never so if you have Apple it. TV Plus, you can watch Come From Away. Come From Away is a musical about um, 9-11, which sounds super depressing. Uh-huh. But basically what it's about is that on 9-11, um, all of these planes got diverted to Newfoundland, this little town in Newfoundland, I remember that Canada, story. Okay? It's a true story, and the mm-hmm. musical is based on a true story, but it's about... How the people of this little gander, okay, mm-hmm. this little town in the middle of nowhere, basically the population of that town doubled and how these people came together to take care of all these strangers they'd never even met. Right. So really it's a musical about kindness. Tim. Okay. If you haven't seen it, it's wonderful. If you've got Apple TV Plus, you can watch it. It's only in an hour and a half. And even if you're not a musical person, you should watch it because it is a true story. I think there's a documentary about that too. That's there is. Really good. And there's a book as well. And the, the musical mm-hmm. is based on the book. Okay. So um, I would highly recommend it. We saw it in Dallas. It was really fun. So nice. Uh, YouTube punk said, "Hey kid, catch full auto." <laughs> <Yeah>. That's right. <laughs> well, I said I can see some good videos coming out of this. Yeah. Um, Omega Mark says, "Yes, three days sounds like the COVID o- Omicron variant." No, I think what it was is it was a combination of a virus and strep okay. that I had a virus and strep. So I think I had a virus the week before that I never got over, and then when we were at the mall, I think I picked up strep. And that, I mean, my fever got up to 105 at one point. Mm. So, I mean, I was really feeling it. If but, you ever uh, need tests, I got a bunch of them. Uh, yeah, get, oh, we my, do too, yeah. My company sends them to us all, mm-hmm. me all the time. Yeah, you too, Punk. I heard about that town. They really went all out. Gander, Newfoundland. You should watch Come From Away. I, even if you don't like musicals, you should watch it. Because okay. it's just a great story. And you'd think 9-11 would be super sad. It's not really that sad. It's got right. sad parts in it. But it's more about the kindness that these complete strangers show to these people who they didn't even know. Right. You know, I mean, it's amazing. So... We did that, and uh, I was trying to think of what else we did. I think that's it. You can go see Sonic 2, like we talked about, so looking forward to that. Uh, I'll talk about investments, Tim, but have you ever have you done anything this month? I talked about my Dave & Buster stock went up for a little bit. It's coming back um, down now. No, I've, some of my oil stocks are doing better that I bought two years ago. Oh, yeah. You You're know, investing so, in Exxon right now. Record profits, dude. So I am uh, reaping some benefits there from waiting patiently forever. Uh, but other than that, still not touching or spending much on anything else. Absolutely. And that's the market is really volatile right now, guys. So you need to be careful with where you're putting your money. So because it's... How low was Dave and Buster's a couple years ago during the pandemic? It what was below it 30. To, below it was 30, in the yeah. mid 20s, mid 20s. Yeah, so it's what, 45 now? 40 something, yeah. So, so, yeah, if you would have invested. 
you have doubled your money. Absolutely. So, so, you know, always opportunities there, even in bad times, is a good time to buy. So, um, I bought oil when it was re- was down to $19 a barrel when I bought it. Yeah. And so. Um, let's, oh, uh, Delusional says, my 13-year-old has the flu now, negative for COVID, but it's... But it's kicking, fe- it's kicking fever too. Oh, sorry to hear that. Hopefully he gets to feeling better soon. That sucks. I mean, it's yeah, just... seems like a lot of flu going around now. Well, and here's the thing: none of us have been around crowds in a while. And if, mm-hmm. like I said, you're going around crowds, your immune system is not, not, not has not been exposed to as much as it normally is because mm-hmm. usually you're probably going to concerts and baseball games and all this mm-hmm. kind of stuff. And if you haven't been going to that stuff and you hit a crowd, I feel like you have a greater risk of being exposed. Um, our friend Stan was supposed to come to the movie um, to see Sonic the Hedgehog with us. And mm-hmm. he texted me saying he's got the flu. No. So uh, he's not feeling good. And he probably got it from Texas Pinball Festival. Oh, I imagine. Baby. So, um, but yeah, so if you're in crowds right now, um, you know, your immune system hasn't, hasn't been exposed to as much as it normally is for the last two years. So keep that in mind. Um, he says flu is indeed making the rounds. So yep. So uh, let's talk about shift to sports real quick. March Madness, Tim. I mean, I didn't really keep up with it. I watched a couple of the games. Um, St. Peter's, of course, was yes. like the big underdog story, which I thought was pretty awesome. They made it pretty far, Tim. They did. Uh, couldn't couldn't what they they made it to the Elite Eight. Elite Eight. Uh-huh. And I mean, that's pretty far for like a 15 seed, but just couldn't crack that. And the coaches already accepted a position at another school. So oh, wow. I mean, it doesn't take long, but um, that that was probably the feel-good story. Um, I have some uh, friends who are big-time UNC fans, and so they right. were happy, but of course, they ended up getting beat. But, um, you know, I mean, I watch a couple of the games. They're always entertaining, Tim. I like to watch, but I never, I really never have anybody I feel like I'm pulling for unless it's like a Texas team or something like that. What about yeah, you? Yeah, it was kind of this year. It was the same for me. Um, my bracket got busted pretty early. Yep. Um, I, I think I had North, I did have North Carolina, I think, win it all. And, of course, they did it. But you got close. So I, I got mean, close, anyway. but I got some points there. But it seemed like nothing else. None of my other teams were even close. Um but it was it was a was an interesting uh, to watch the championship game was good it was a good close game and you know big comeback and so it was a uh, was pretty entertaining I was glad to um, you know it's kind of like I, I kind of was rooting for those one of those other teams to pull an upset I, I kind of like you it comes if one of my teams aren't in there I like to root for the underdogs and it was like Kansas and North Carolina I didn't really care who won yeah. so I was like yeah yeah okay. <laughs> It is what it is. But, hey, it's over. Congratulations to Kansas. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was, I mean well-played game, and it was fun to watch. So, um, NHL, NBA playoffs are about to start up, Tim. Mavericks and Stars are both going to make it into their respective right. playoffs here in Texas, so we're looking forward to that. Um, but, Tim, the Lakers fell off the face of the earth. That's I've been the big that. story. It's like yeah. they're not even going to make the play-in games. Right. I mean, and it's like LeBron and gone. You know? Right. <laughs> I mean, like, just out of it. And so... Um, that's probably the biggest story out of the um, NBA side of things. Look, the Mavericks, I don't know if we can make a run, Tim, but we're looking pretty good we, right now. We certainly have had a good last month. There's what a flow chart. You know, we have flow charts for monitor repair, too. Right. There's a Mavericks flow chart. The flow chart starts with, um, did all the guys that Luca kicked the ball out to outside the three-point line make their shots? Right. If that is yes... Yeah. That means the Mavericks won and they win. look like a playoff team. Right. If the answer is no, that means the Mavericks look like a lottery pick. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically what that, that flow chart looks That's like. That's pretty funny. So as long as Luca kicks it out to guys and they make their shots, we win. Right. Okay? But if Luca, if, if they kicks it out to the guys and they don't make their shots, we ain't going to win. Right. Okay? Mm-hmm. Even if Luca puts up all the points himself, we can't win. No. Our guys, our role players have to step up. And Tim, as long as that's the case, we stand a good shot of making it deep. Um, stars are going to get in, Tim, uh, to the NHL playoffs. And, and guys, you may not be hockey fans. I've only picked up hockey, you know, over the last three years, Tim, really. Uh-huh. But I will tell you, there is nothing like playoff hockey. Mm-hmm. It is super exciting. And it's like the rink shrinks uh-huh. during the playoffs because it moves a lot faster, it, it seems like, like it. and things just things just pop a little bit harder. And so, like, if you haven't watched playoff hockey, just try to pick a team and watch a little bit this season because it's exciting. It's fast. They're not, Tim, they don't stop for hardly anything. Right. Which is what's the good thing. But um, but I think it's going to be fun to watch. So, like I said, even if you've never watched playoff hockey before, I would encourage you to do it. Um, it's fun to watch, if nothing else. And, Tim, I'll say it again. MLB opening day was today. MLB opening day was today. <laughs> MLB opening day was today. Are you a little bit excited I did not about know. it? I am, I am super excited. I did not 
know if this was going to happen because we had the lockout and all the animosity between the players and the owners. And look, things are still not fair, quote unquote, okay? But they worked out a deal and we're playing baseball and that's all I want. And I'm not saying the Rangers are going to be the best team, Tim, but I'm looking forward to watching some Ranger games. That's all I got to say. So um, um, I'm very excited. Um, I've been watching a little bit of baseball today. I watched the Cubs game, Tim. Um, There is nothing like professional baseball to me. It's one of my favorite things to watch. So looking forward to watching more of that very soon. Okay, Tim, movie and TV talk. Okay. Would you like to go first? I can go first. What do you think? Oh, sure. I'll go first. Go for it. Um, I started, uh, so I just happened to notice the other day in a news article that uh, the Peterson's home is up for sale. And uh, the one in Modesto where they think that Lacey Peterson was actually murdered, although there's no signs or proof of that. Right. Uh, so We should say up front, no relation. Right, no relation, not my cuz, um, <laughs> you know, but um, it got me to thinking about it, and they have a documentary on Hulu called The Murder of Lacey Peterson. I think it's six episodes, and it really um, goes into a lot deeper, a lot of stuff I for, either I forgot or I just didn't remember, and so, um, you know, and then at the end, they really make a case for, you know, stuff the jury didn't see. Um, is it really possible that he is innocent, at least of this crime? We know he was a dirtbag, but was he a murderer, or did he physically do it himself? Did he have it done? Whatever. Because the whole case was circumstantial evidence. Yes. And uh, But, you know, there is a case for circumstantial evidence. If something, you know, smells like fire, probably is fire. You're somewhere. You might not see it, but you can smell it. And uh, this really afterwards, even my wife, because she was like, oh, I hate that guy. I remember she was pregnant during that time. So she was really, and it showed, it was kind of, for those of you who are younger, it was where new, news was really taken off like 24 hours and all the news people were parked outside and stuff. In fact, that's one of the cases uh, that they used to kind of present that he might not have done it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just tell you guys one thing. There's no spoilers here. Um, uh, you, did you know that there was a robbery that took place across the street? Right. And an evidence and people that said they saw Lacey go out and confront them about what are you doing, stuff like that. Well, obviously, if they're bad guys and you catch them in the middle of robbery, something bad could happen to you. The problem is, is that uh, the police arrested them, found them, caught them, put them in jail. And uh, remember, if you might remember, Lacey was murdered on uh, Christmas Eve. Uh, they, The police said this happened on December 26th or the 28th or something like that. So no way that they could have murdered her because it was after the fact. Right. And the news guy says, hold up a second. This was the biggest story we ever had. I stood out on that day they're saying that robbery took place. I was there at 5 a.m., and I never left, and I never saw no robbery going. It, no way it could have taken that place. That was after she had already disappeared. Right. So um, he, so that was one of the things that really kind of made you think, huh, well, you know, maybe they were wrong. And the police officers, well, maybe we, we they were wrong. We pretty much took the robber's word for it. Well, yeah, it's like, you know, the robber said, yeah, we did it. We were there on the 26th, but we didn't have anything to do with that lady that died. Right. That's what they said. <laughs> and the cops went, okay. okay. <laughs> so it's like really make So anyway, if you find that interesting, you might would really find that interesting. There was some stuff that the <clears throat> jury wasn't allowed to see. And then the drama behind the jury. Now, I remembered that some people getting kicked off. At the last minute, and the jury foreman got fired. and It's like they were running out of jurors, and were they ever going to get a verdict? And then how they actually came to a a consensus is pretty interesting, especially if you like that kind of stuff. So that's one thing that I've been watching. And then I I finally finished up Revenge, which I still highly recommend. It was a great, good ending and everything, but it was a long show. So I needed a filler. You ever have a filler show? Yep. Every once in a while, you just you don't want to watch it every single night or be that into it, but you like an episode now and then. And my filler show lately has been Stitchers. Now, it's another freeform show that's on Hulu, and basically, uh, you've heard of the, the, the phrase before, a stitch in time. Uh-huh. 
So what they do is when a person's uh, body dies or when they're dead, they feel like they have about eight hours or so that they can actually go into their brain and see their memories and see kind of what happened to them. So they're using it to solve crime or see what happened to this person. That, but it takes a special person um, that she is able to do that. She has that so kind of brain. A, it's kind of like a CSI case of the it's week. It's a CSI case of the week kind of deal. But then there's a backstory. Why is she able to do that? Why can't any human just go in there and read another person's mind? And why is it, you know, is it set up for her? And what happened to her? And how did she get to this point? She has basically, um, she's really quirky and she's really pretty and stuff, but she's real quirky. Um, kind of like a Sheldon. She uh, has no concept of time. So she has to set a watch and tell her, you, it's weird. She has no concept of time. So somebody, like, I'm talking to your ear off. She goes, I didn't notice. Yeah, you know, and she's real blunt with them. She goes, I don't, I don't, it's in, you know, they, she has no concept of time, which is really strange if you thought about you had no concept of time. It would be really um, weird life. I read a book about a guy who had lost his short term memory, mm. and he was like that. Yeah. So he lost his short term memory. That's kind so of what happened. The only to her. thing, he had, a, of... he had a car wreck, and he could only remember things in the long term. So anything short term, like you could tell him anything, he would forget it. He had yeah. to set notes and reminders for everything. Yeah. So she's kind of quirky, like I'll tell you that about her. And so it also is one of the, I told you, it's one of those uh, shows you can watch just one episode and enjoy it, or it is a backstory all along if you keep up with the characters and what's going on. And you can tell kind of they're flirting and stuff, so, you know, they're going to end up together and stuff like that. But it's kind of fun. It's a fun show. Right. And it's uh, it's very uh, PG-13. You could probably watch it with the kids. It, it's not... Like it has murders and stuff in it, but it's not gory. It doesn't show anything. Um, it's kind of a CSI type show. Yeah. So procedural is all we call that. Yeah, procedural. procedural. So what's so. in the ch- chat? I don't know. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Uh, it looks like slant, 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 okay. slant, slant says, hey, maybe off topic now. Thanks for the videos. Learned to discharge the CRT in my new Astro City many years ago from this channel. Also learned about JAMA Basics. Big help. Thanks from Sweden. You're welcome. Wow. So, and it's not off topic. It's just the after show. We take we all We talk topics. about every topic. Exactly. Yeah. So we talk about every topic. So there's no off topic time. Um, but we always like to hear positive stories about the channel that always puts us in a good mood and encourages us to continue. And on. I always like it when you guys first come in and you start telling where you're from. Yes. Because it's just... And, He's from Sweden. How cool is that? Yeah. You know, it's like, um, it, we literally have shipped uh, DVDs all over the world. We've answered questions all over the world. I, I think that's cool. But it, even in the United States, people were talking, and somebody said they were from Nova Scotia, one of the places I've always wanted to go. Maybe one day I will. Um, so, anyway, thank you for being here. And, and I think it's cool that you live in Sweden. Your English is great, by the way. <laughs> so, yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, um, and I will say this. Uh, so let's talk. Let's get to Mr. Dwayne here. He says, saw the Batman, and it was surprisingly good. I've heard very good things about and that. And I have not watched it yet. Me neither. My brother said it was better than Spider-Man No Way Home, mm-hmm. which I just saw. We'll talk about that. But um, I've heard really good things about that. Um, I've heard a little mixed reviews, but overall, I think most people really liked it. I was... Um, the only reason I didn't go is my nephews were really wanting to go, and uh, I didn't want to say I, I could. We had to keep them for a little bit, so I didn't want to take them because they're too little. Number one, I thought a little bit too adult for them, but it's also three hours long. Correct. And I knew they wouldn't sit through three hours, and I haven't had three hours to sit <laughs> exactly. to do it. So that's going to be one of my goals. Uh, I think I'm off on Good Friday, and maybe I'll. Um, just take a little time to myself and go see a movie or something. I was going to say, the um, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog is two hours, which yeah. is long for a kid's That's movie. That's long for yeah, a kid's movie. Yeah, I was about movie. to say. So we'll see. I think my kids will be okay, but it's supposed to be action-packed enough that it's okay. So, so how did you enjoy Spider-Man then, being that we're on the superhero it movie? It was very good. Was I enjoyed good, it. Huh? Um, if you're a fan, I'd seen, I've seen every other Sony Spider-Man right. movie. Right. I have seen the ones with... Toby Maguire, obviously. I've seen the ones with what's his name that I can't even remember at the right. moment. I have the seen them guy. all, right? I've seen them all, and I've seen the ones with Tom Holland. 
So, yeah. um, so as a fan of all of those movies, it just brought them all together in such a beautiful way. And it is a fantastic movie. And Tim, I'm a huge Doctor Strange fan. I'm mm-hmm. probably going to go ahead and buy my tickets to go see, um, uh, you know, the, the next Doctor Strange movie, which comes out next month. Okay. So it's actually coming out. Um, I love Doctor Strange. He may be my favorite character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe or the Marvel Universe period, Tim. Okay. Even in the cartoons, I thought he was cool. So I'm um, looking forward to seeing that as well. But Spider-Man was good. Highly recommended. If you're a fan, if you've seen any other Sony Spider-Man movie ever, you should go see it just because um, it's enjoyable. It's enjoyable to seeing the characters interact, to seeing the old bad guys come back. Tim, they get like everybody. Mm. Like they get all these old bad guys from all the previous Spider-Man movies, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's amazing. And they get the actors, the original actors who did them all. So did you buy it, or is it actually for it's rent on, now? Um, it's on on demand, so you can get it on demand. And okay. Rent it. Well, see, I was one to one, and no, no, but no, no, you no. could only you buy, have to it. buy it. You're yeah. right. No, you have to. So buy I'm kind of waiting for it to go just to rental because I don't bucks. know if I want to own it. Yeah, it's twenty dollars. It's worth yeah. twenty dollars. Okay. If you like Spider Man, I mean, it was worth. Well, it I'll have to check it out. So, um, my brother told me ahead of time though. He's like, you should just buy it because you'll like it. So okay. <laughs> I was like, okay, easy enough. Um, speaking of Hulu, Tim, I've been watching The Dropout. Have you seen the dropout? I have not seen that. That's the one about about Theranos and Elizabeth Holmes. Okay. So um, if you guys don't know the story of Theranos, it was this company that was going to make this box that took one drop of blood and would run all these tests on it. (laughs) Right. Which we saw the documentary on that. Right, exactly. We did watch it. Yeah, exactly. We watched the documentary, but this is a um, show based on that. It's got Amanda Siegfried in it. She plays Elizabeth Holmes, and it's very good. It's very entertaining. Highly recommend it. It's still going on, Tim. The the last the latest episode I think drops tonight at eleven. Okay. And I think there's still maybe one or two more after this. But um, you know, I I just love that story and everything. And Tim, in that same vein, I've also been watching We Crashed on Apple TV Plus. Okay. Um, which is about WeWork. Are you familiar with WeWork? No. WeWork was a company that basically sublet these like little office spaces to people. And so, and like they were a unicorn, Tim. They were worth like all this money and then it all came crashing down. Okay. Okay. And so it's the story about WeWork. There's a lot of documentaries out there about WeWork um, that you can watch. I've, I've seen heard all some those. Of those. Yeah. Um, but um, uh, this has, um, oh, it's got Jared Leto plays okay. the lead guy. And then, um, oh, I can't even think of the other the actress's name at the moment, but uh, she's brief. She's very famous too, and she was in the Princess Diaries. Um, she played the lead. I can't. Even think now of I did name. see. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, John, but talking about uh, the dropout, I did see. Was it Finding Anna or? Yes, I watched that too. Fine, yeah. inventing Anna. Inventing Anna, and you know. Did I tell you not to watch that? Yes, you told me okay. not to watch it. <laughs> I thought I said that, and I ended up watching it anyway. And what'd you think? And it was okay. It it's was like, okay. Yeah, it's a lot for okay. Yeah, a lot of time for okay. <laughs> well, yeah, it takes. I, I, I kind of, I guess, was more it just. I don't know. It kind of had that catch me if you can feel, it does. and I was just, just. The fact that it was a true story was kind of blowing my mind. Right. And then I did a little bit more research on it. It's kind of a, a very interesting story. And also, what was the other one? Uh, uh, so the, the, Not okay. a Vegan or something? I watched that one, too. Uh, okay. Um, on Inventing Anna, did you feel like the reporter's story, like they just continued that way longer than it needed to go? And like it kind of yeah. got in the way a lot? A little bit more. Uh, yeah, see, yeah, it could have been the... shorter. They could have condensed right. it and taken a lot of her stuff out. And it would have been fine. Right. But I felt like it went way longer than it should have. Yeah. And it's just a lot of time to devote to an okay show. Right. That's my point. Okay. A lot of time to devote to an okay show. So, but look, it, I mean, no harm in watching it. It's just right. like, it, look, if it would have been 10 hours and great, I would have said you need to watch <laughs> right. it. Right. But you, 10 you hours it was, and it's okay. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's like, ugh, is it worth spending 10 hours of my life for okay? I could have watched Batman three times. Exactly. That's so, what you're saying. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Um, Omega says, at least for a year, closer to a year and a half, COVID tests cannot be distinguished between the usual flu and COVID. Uh, that nicely boosted the stat of the scare. Yeah. Um, YouTube Punk says, Spider-Man is great. And I agree. It was very good. Um, so We Crashed was really good with Jared Leto and what's her name. Um, it's very good. It's still going on. The Dropout is really good. You should watch that. Let's talk about Winning Time, Tim. Winning Time, the rise of the Lakers dynasty. That looks really good. I've heard a lot of people talk about this and they say it's okay. I am loving this. Really? And I'm not a big Lakers fan, but right. I'm a basketball fan. Right. And you got to remember that the Showtime Lakers are kind of when basketball went through that evolution. Before that happened, basketball was, was kind of a boring, sorry, yeah. boring sport, okay? And this is kind of the evolution to what the style of play that where we have. we have multiple point guards on the floor, mm-hmm. we have shooters and all this kind of stuff. This is where we start to transition to that in the NBA. So this is like one of the most exciting times in NBA history right here. Mm-hmm. And to Jerry Buss... Um, and, and, you know, 
like um who's the guy who plays the character he always plays opposite will ferrell and like um uh in uh Step Brothers and um okay i know who you're talking uh, about what's his name i can see his face I ricky bobby yeah, yeah well, <laughs> no, you know, ricky bobby you know, um, always... the guy uh you know i'm talking about yes i know who you're and talking then, about um yeah exactly and he's also in in um in Talladega nights but yes he plays jerry buss and he plays jerry buss so well uh-huh. um it's really good and like jerry buss is like this playboy style guy who wants to bring kind of this certain energy to basketball mm-hmm. and he talks about how he did that and then you get magic side of it which is really interesting so Irvin johnson you mm-hmm. get his kind of side and, and in his story so really the two central main characters are jerry buss and magic johnson right. okay those are the two guys but it also goes into kareem abdul jabbar talks about like his faith and some of the stuff yeah. he went through i have found the entire thing super fascinating and i love it i can't wait to watch it as then. being a basketball I like james fan worthy yeah. i was a james worthy fan being a basketball fan you should watch it. Like mm-hmm. you are a basketball fan, you should watch right. this because it really it I mean it's telling the story of the Lakers, but it's really telling the story about how basketball evolved into the sport it is today. That's what the story really is. One of my favorite things to do with my son is he didn't grow up watching that. Right. And so I like to go back and watch Lakers versus Celtics and mm-hmm. he's heard of Larry Bird right. and he knows about him on 2K or something. But he's never really, when he watched him play, he's like, oh my gosh. I'm like, yeah, you don't understand. These guys uh, were, and, and there was such a good rivalry, and it was. Magic Johnson, I mean, and just the way he was able to get the ball to people in different mm-hmm. ways that, I mean, before that, it was pretty rote. Like, I mean, right. guys, like, I mean, literally, it was like, you know, guy takes in the ball, or he shoots it, right. or guy takes in the ball, pass it to Kareem, right. you know, sky hook. You know, I mean, right. I mean, it was like it was like people knew what you were gonna do, right. and like it was all kind of predictable. Magic kind of threw that whole equation right. out and said, "I'm just gonna feed the ball to whoever's open, man. Uh-huh. You know, and you guys can take the shots, and we'll find the open spots." And you know, I mean, it was a whole totally different style, and it was fast, mm-hmm. and they sped up the game, and that's what the whole thing's about. If you haven't seen, if if you like basketball at all, you should watch it. Yeah, I like it. So you should watch it, Tim. Okay, watch it. HBO Max. Uh, Saturday or Sunday nights, one or the other. I can't remember. I always watch on HBO Max because it's on demand. So it's like whenever there's a new episode, I just get alerted. And then, uh, Tim, I have watched the first two episodes of Moon Knight on Disney Plus, which is the latest Marvel um, show. Okay. And it's good so far. I've seen it. So um, the first and the second episode feel like they should have been a kind of like a first part together. Mm-hmm. Like they should have released them together. Because the first episode totally leaves you in the dark about everything. And then the second episode starts to fill in most of the blanks for you. So I feel like now, since you can watch them back to back, if you're going to start it, watch them back to back. So that way you know what's happening. But I watched the first episode, then waited a week for the second episode. And and I was like, oh, I filled in all the mis- like a lot of the missing stuff, right? Like it filled in a lot mm-hmm. of the stuff that they were leaving you in the dark on. So far, I like it. Um... And it's very entertaining, and, um, you know, I don't know how it's going to be going forward. But so far, I'm going to keep watching. I mean, that's all I'll tell you. So, um, anything, uh, so Tim, I'll be seeing Sonic the Hedgehog 2 on Saturday, so when we get back together for the next live show, I will have a report that. on that. Um, I, let's see, the next live show is, I oh, see Windows 8 is confusing me already, Tim. So, next live show will be the 5th. So I will not have seen Doctor Strange by then. Okay. So I don't think. So, because I think it comes out the 6th, I think. So anyway, so May 5th will be the next live show. We'll do it at our normal time, 5.30 Central Time and all that kind of stuff. And uh, um, if you guys are in the live chat real quick and want to tell us what you've been watching so we can kind of talk about it, that's fine too. Um, I do want to see the Batman, Tim, like you mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, is it The Lost City that's also out right now that looks yes. kind of good? I, I kind of want to see that. Um Sonic the Hedgehog 2 will be the first time I've set foot in a movie theater since Star Wars Episode 9. Wow. <laughs> That's a while back. So that was December of 2019? Uh, mm-hmm. December 2019? Right before COVID, huh? Yeah. Okay. So, um, Interesting. So, yeah, so I have not set foot in a movie theater since then. Um, so I'm looking forward to being in a movie theater again. And the nice thing is, Tim, I'll know all the people in there. <laughs> so I will be sitting in a movie theater with literally everybody that I know. So I mean, you know, not everybody, but you right, know, a ton of people that I know. So that's pretty cool. There. It's gonna be fun. Hopefully, we'll have a good time. And I hate that you can't be there. Yeah. So be careful going where you're going, and uh, and we'll work it all out from there. But anyway, okay, I think we're ready to sign off. Tim, is yeah. there anything else you have before we before we sign off here? No, just hope everybody's doing good, staying safe. Uh, keep 
fixing your games. I really like the video that we watched uh, before the show tonight. Yeah, the Racer so Show video. By all means, uh, if you have video content, let us know. We'd love to highlight that like that. That was a great video. Yeah, it was. So, Very interesting. Uh, Razor Show does some great content, guys, and you guys need to check out his channel for more of that kind of stuff. Tim, I'm going to throw this out here one more time just for everybody. Still have that deal, guys. In fact, while we were on the show, we sold a couple more. Right. <laughs> so, um, but you guys, if you guys want to get in on it, we're we're very limited on quantities here, Tim. Um, we may only have like three left. Okay. So if you want to get in, you may want to get in like as soon as you're watching this, because otherwise it may they may be gone by the time that you're out. Um, but again, uh, you can get our Volume One DVD disc only for eight dollars while supplies last, and um, you can get your copy at the link there. We also have the link below in the show notes. Just want to remind you guys. I think we only have like three three left because uh, I only set a limited quantity there. Um, this may surprise you, Tim, but we don't make any money on it. <laughs> so it's basically a loss leader in a way, but hopefully it encourage you, encourages you guys to uh, to buy the rest of the DVD series and have all of that for to own. So, um, But good stuff. Um, Omega Mark says, the last time I went to a movie was Avatar in 3D. Wow. Okay. That's a long time. That's you got me minute. beat. You got me beat. So, hmm. um, yeah, I think I think me and my wife went out for our anniversary to go see Star Wars. Wow. And hey, I like that movie. I know a lot of people get a lot of flack, but I actually like episode 9, too. I did, too. Yeah, it's good. Mm-hmm. But anyway, we have out. Thanks for being here. Thanks for uh, watching us demonstrate strippers, Tim. Wire <laughs> strippers. So, um, and uh, we look forward to seeing you guys all next month. Uh, you know, if you ever have anything between this show and the next live show, make sure you write us the questions at arcaderepairtips.com. Hey, we'll take movies there too, or TV shows. So if you guys want to tell us about what movies or TV shows you're watching that we need to watch or whatever, please let us know. Books, if you guys read books. Um, I read books too sometimes. And so if you have like any good book recommendations, I'm always looking for that too. So i um, always looking for that kind of stuff. Um, but Tim, I've got one. Um, I'm in, I'm, I've started reading it. How not to read the Bible is the name of it. Okay. And so it, it kind of is breaking down some stuff. So that's actually why I'm in the middle of reading right now, kind of on and off while I'm, while I'm doing it, while I can. It's hard to find time to read when you got kids, you know? So it's like, usually when they go to sleep, I'm either watching TV or I'm reading or doing something like that. But anyway, we hope that you have a great Easter if you celebrate that. Hopefully you have a great uh, April with your families and your friends and all that kind of stuff. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on April, or excuse me, May 5th for the next live show. So until then, everybody take care. Hey, Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo! Oh, we're going to have to dress up. I guess so. I'll get the the chips and salsa. All right. Anyway, Cinco de Mayo! We'll see you then. 5.30 Central Time. Be here, and y'all take care. Have a good night. Adios, amigos. There you go. Bye. Bye.